Welcome back to Always Almost There, an original Goose podcast series by Storm Sound and Osiris Media. I'm Brian, aka Jive Goose. I'm Danny. I'm Neil. I'm especially Kev. And I'm Ryan. The five of us are back together today to recap Goose's 2023 fall tour. And we have heard your feedback uh, over the last year and a half of this podcast and that some of you strangely uh, don't like the concept of a three and a half hour episode. Um, what? Which is just preposterous. Uh, you know, we don't understand that because, you know, we, we talk for three and a half hours and, it, you know, it's fun. Um, but for your uh, listening pleasure uh, and easier digestion of our content, uh, we will be splitting this fall to a recap into two episodes. Uh, so you will have seen before you clicked on this uh, that this says fall to a recap part one. Uh, and so today we will be covering Boston through Cascade Equinox Festival. Uh, and part two coming later this week, we'll cover the remainder of the tour from uh, Oakland through uh, Fort Collins. Uh, so we're excited to be do- trying out this new format here, which means, guys, two episodes means double the mail sack. Uh, so hopefully hopefully people are excited about that. Two three and a half hour episodes. Yes, so so exactly. Yeah. We're giving us more. We're giving ourselves more time. <laughs> more time two sacks. So maybe maybe it's because I'm not on Twitter anymore, but I, I haven't seen all these complaints that came in. So just uh, just hearing that for the first time, a quick pro tip is, as a listener, you can actually split podcasts up into as many parts as you want. Uh, you can you can just pause or stop. You listening can pause them, yeah, and then pick it back up later. Yeah. So I've done that. You could make uh, this a four parter. I mean, if you want, if you so choose. Um, yeah. five or six, like nobody's going to tell you how to live your life. It can be, it can be but, as many parts as you want. Yeah. But Ryan is going point. out of his way to, to make it a two-parter for you. So I hope we those are. people say thank you. I hope so too. Uh, you know, we'll see, we'll see, but thank you everybody for listening as always. Uh, thanks to everybody who tuned in or was a guest on our day after show recaps throughout fall tour. Uh, we, we had a blast doing them. Uh, there were, there were a lot, you know, Neil and I, tend to you know we, we like at, at the beginning of the tour we're like oh man it's been so long like we're ready to get back into the swing of things and then by the end of tour we're both kind of like could use a break <laughs> yeah it's a lot <laughs> for a little it's while a but so thanks to everybody uh for tuning in uh you know every day of the week um and, and making them so much fun if, if you guys haven't seen uh any any of the the day after shows we're gonna we go into a little bit more detail on each show on those than we will be in this episode um, and especially our Red Rocks recaps, um, you know, are, are a sight to behold and to listen to. Uh, so you should go check those Fire. out. If you yeah, I did, I, I did like them. three. I did three of those day after shows and I felt like I needed a break. So yeah. <laughs> I know, I know what you're saying. <laughs> listen, when, when you when you hit the courts for hours and then you podcast for 40 minutes, it like it, it takes it's a, a long day. It's hard. It's hard for it's hard for jive. Um, well, without further ado, without any more preamble. I think it's time to turn back the clock about a month here um, from this time of recording. Um, and we're going to start at the beginning of fall tour um, with Neil's uh, dead center rail show. My dead center rail show. Yeah, that was uh, that all was all over out. the all over the stream. Oh, man. Fist pump Neil. Fist Bouncing. pump Neil. The, the whole experience was was colored by the fact that I just got hundreds of messages from my closest friends telling me that I was doing everything wrong uh, dead center <laughs> on the rail. Uh, I was dancing incorrectly. Uh, I was jumping strangely. Um, I have no regrets, but Fist pumping. It, it was a hell of a show and I had a really good time. So uh, <clears throat> let's just jump in and, and talk about this show. Where was it, Neil? Yeah. Where and when? In my hometown of Boston, Massachusetts, September 13th, 2023. Great city. It was P-mast. months and months Bean and months town. ago. As Ben said at this show, Boston is the best city in Boston. Uh, And I think everybody who lives or has lived in Boston agrees with that. Even a lot of us that don't live there agree with with that sentiment. I can't say anything more than that. I was a North Quincy guy, so... Is that still Boston for those of us that don't live there? No, it just means you have a shittier accent. And ladies and gentlemen, this this Boston (laughs) trivia is why we split this episode into two parts. Now that there's two parts, we have time for this. Yeah, we do have time for this. Yeah, because normally, normally, normally we, we don't get off task. So <laughs> it, to have this extra time oh, yeah. and, and leeway to do this is yeah. very refreshing. We're, we're professionals is. here. This was at the Harbor Lights. Um, and if you look on elgoose.net, it will say Leader Bank Pavilion. No one who lives here calls it that. It is called Harbor Lights. 
It's been Harbor Lights forever. Still is. Oh man. I saw some I saw some great shows at Harbor Lights. What did you see there way back in the like cheese? Or like <laughs> I, did, I did I did see <laughs> cheese there. Yeah. <laughs> I saw so that I, I, I think one of the best shows I saw there was I saw Panic there. It was it was nine seven ninety seven and Branford Marsalis came out, uh, which was which was a, a nice treat. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 a real I love that venue. I mean I mean, it's a killer venue that's only gotten better over time, right? So like way back in 97, it was literally, there was nothing else there. It was like it and the Harpoon Brewery next door. And maybe not even in 97. Maybe that came like a couple of years later. But um, so there was nothing there at all. So going there was like really strange and scary. And then like now a whole city has gone up like around it. And it's absolutely, I don't know. It's a stunning upscale neighborhood now, which is yeah, really, wow. really got, weird. Gotta, it's right on the water. You got a clam shack right there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah well, you definitely have clams right next door. I will get to that. So like, let me use that as an opportunity to jump into this set. Yeah, here. This, like, this is a goose podcast. Oh, all right. Oh. So set one, we have a, a drive opener into Atlas Dogs, then a absolutely stunning butterflies that will just make you stand there in awe. Uh, then and, and time to did. flee. Hold on. Let me finish the set list here, Ryan. Uh, <laughs> into Lookout Cleveland. A uh, heck of a segue there. Danger Zone into Danger zone. Jive Lee. Um, I mean, this everything was just going right with this set. It started off with quite a bit of Jeb banter. We got a we got a college right off the bat from Jeb, which kind of was thematic throughout the whole entire Set tour. The tone. <laughs> and then Shout uh, out oysters. for no particular reason at all, we got a new boot goofin from Jeb, whatever that means. So uh, <laughs> but killer version of Drive with Peter on guitar through the entire thing actually, which is pretty amazing. Um, and then we get the flea, which was actually really, really interesting. You get a nice kind of chugging piano jam. And then this like weird thing tacked on to the end of it, which is like this like playful, almost like child nursery rhyme like jam on the end, which was really, really cool. And then you get an absolutely killer segue into Lookout Cleveland, which spawned the clams tweet. Because at this particular moment in time, the scent of freshly fried clams just <laughs> wafted over the audience. And, nice walk. you know, as I was like standing there, just like, you know, breathing in the clams, I just felt inspired and tweeted it. And it's a big thing. You know, um, breathing, breathing it in in Colorado inspires writing the song Seekers. And breathing it yeah. in in Boston inspires Clam you to tweets. go buy clams. The scent of fried clams and low tide. Um, so, <laughs> um, but no, so, uh, look out Cleveland was awesome. Again, I was there, you know, we don't talk about experience as much on the show, but I think because I was like literally front row center for the show, I should talk about it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when, when Jeb started singing, I just kind of lost my mind and just <laughs> screamed like fucking get it, Jeb. And like, not thinking that the band could actually hear me, but Rick absolutely heard me. And got like a huge grin out of him. So that was like pretty funny. Did you guys lock eyes? We didn't lock eyes. That only happens for Ryan when he's in the front row. To oh, be man. Hey. That, that, that happens for Ryan when he, if he's in like the 20th row. <laughs> yeah, it's just... Sometimes it just happens. It happened it happened to us at Red Rocks, you know? He's always trying to lock sometimes, eyes with Peter. Sometimes it works. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes so really cool kind of funk jam in that one. That one felt like longer than it actually was in the end. I think it only said about 12 and a half, 13 minutes. And then a really ripping flea or Lee rather to close the set. Lee. Uh, yeah, really, really killer first set. Also a really cool thing of note <clears throat> here when we're talking about this first set, the time to flee lookout Cleveland danger zone was a nod to the hurricane that was offshore of New England at that point in time, which was really uncertain how that was going to impact everybody the next day. But luckily... The show still happened. Um, it did. Yeah, this this is a this is a really awesome first set, especially coming off of a pretty much two month break from the band. You know, th this was their first show um, after the end of summer tour. Outside of like, obviously, they played for fifty minutes at Newport at the end of July, uh, but this is their first headlining show since SPAC. Um, you know, they they had the Levitate Festival in the Newport, obviously in July, but th this is it. And so we, I remember, you know, being so psyched. For this for this webcast you know just like goose is back fall tours here let's go and they come out of the gate with this drive 
um, which obviously not a bracket jam, 13, 14 minutes, but it did two things. One, it demonstrated that Goose is in fact back. And two, it demonstrated that drive jamming again at Peach was going to be a continuation uh, on this tour. And we are very happy to report the drive is consistently jamming again. Uh, so thank you, Goose, uh, for, for fixing that. Uh, what obviously must have been a clerical error uh, for, for the first you know, few months of the year, uh, you know, not jamming drive so many times. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the rest of the set was great. You know, Atlas Dogs and Butterflies, great first set fair here. Uh, you know, as Neil mentioned, that Butterflies will make you stand in awe. And watching Neil on the webcast with the biggest <laughs> grin on his face uh, so during good. Butterflies was just it was very heartwarming and the flea is really really cool um you know neil you kind of you talked about the jam here but i also want to talk about the segue you know they were planning on playing lookout cleveland and it was cool the way they segued because they found them themselves in the jam instead of the intro to the song um, which was a really interesting way to segue into it uh you know some biscuits fans might call it inverted and other biscuits fans might tell us we're idiots uh for saying such a thing um, but thankfully, no biscuits fans are listening to this podcast. So shout out! Uh, first of all, shout out to hey, the Jeff. friend of the pod, Jeff Hill. Hey, and second yeah. of all, Danny Rosewoods is most definitely a biscuits fan. Yeah, take but a look at him. Make, he's not going to make Big fun one. of us. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> not not for that at least. It was. The Neil thing, says, "Look at him." Of course, he's a biscuits fan. The thing that I I wish they had like so that was cool, right? We got that jam, and then it's like. That's sort of maybe that evolution that we'll see with the band of like, they almost like, and then they like started it back over again and kind of came back around to the song. I felt like it was, it was a, it, 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 it you know, they're working through that, that sort of segues. We have an unfinished flea there too. Um, I thought this is like a, just a, just on paper too. Really, really solid um, top to bottom. I think just sort of yeah song selection. You know, you get a jive. I'm liking breaking up the jives around. And um, yeah, I think just like looking at this, you get your first set songs like an Atlas of Butterflies. We get a couple of jammers. We get a good cover and um, finishing with High Energy Lee too. Yeah, set two. Um, all right. So let's see here. Set two, we have Rockdale, Butter Rum, Jive 2, A Western Sun, SOS, Not Finished, nope. Madavon encore dawn and the first thing i want to say about this is after the the bob don don that we'll talk about later <laughs> i realized like bob this don was don. also like some kind of setless cuteness by the band here where it's madavon don um so that, somebody should reach out to work? the band and ask i feel like that's got to be madavon don madavon don yeah madavon just don. like bob don don yeah, Bob Don Don was intentional. I don't know if Bob Don, Bob Don Don. I feel like this was yeah. intentional, also. But um, quick set list highlights: um, not a whole lot of jamming going on in this set, other than the Madavon that comes near the end. Um, this butter rum, though, I let's talk about this butter rum. rum. Yeah, I think to say not a whole lot of jamming outside of the Madavon. This you you were the one that was saying you've been saying for weeks, like. Get ready for the pod because I'm gonna fluff rum. the shit out of the Boston rum. So please fluff I, the shit. I, I've out. been well, I've been doing that to actually just soak the fire a little bit. I actually am not gonna fluff the shit out of this rum, <laughs> but it's it is really good. It, they they completely escape the song structure of rum almost immediately in the jam. The jam itself is, I, I don't know. It's it it's great. It's got excellent drumming. It's got really cool synth swells that are like super weird and psychedelic, and then the interplay of the guitar and the vintage vibe in this, it's just like, Oh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not going back to listen to rums, but this rum, I might go back and listen to just for like that few minutes of jam. It's really, really cool. And Fire. it's not like rum, like at all. It really isn't. <laughs> um, it's really good. It's, it's a demonstration of that new variable voice control thing that Peter got on his vintage vibe. Um, for those who are confused by what I just said, uh, Peter's vintage vibe electric piano. He got a modification on before fall tour where he has a slider where he can basically change the sound based on where the pickup is inside. Uh, most people probably will di can disregard what I just said. Uh, but if you're a nerd like me, you maybe already knew that. Um, yeah. so. And if you listen to the uh, always almost there podcast with uh, with Joel from Humphreys. Yes. You can learn a little bit more about that. Good. Call, we talked yeah. about that with Joel Jive Ryan and I. Yes, very, very good call. I also want to point out uh, in this Jive 2 in the second set, uh, we saw a slightly 
rearranged uh, version of this. You know, we've seen pretty standard in the past. First solo section, Peter does clav for a bit and then organ, and then Rick takes a guitar solo in the second half. Uh, this version, uh, you know, started off just Peter on clav, and then Rick took a little bit of a solo in that section instead of Peter going to organ, um, and then the, you know, usual Rick solo uh, in the second part, which was just, it was interesting to hear. Anyone else? Yeah. Good. Anyone got thoughts on the on the show? This said, you know? I, yeah, I, I would just say that I think, I think that the SOS is finished. And, yes, thank you. And then Don is yeah. also finished. Yeah, I, we're, you know what? We're gonna <laughs> really? we're gonna, we're gonna do that here. right now. No, we're we're gonna nip this in the bud here. Um, if they played the quote unquote satellite part of So Ready separate from the song part of So Ready. It would be noticed. It would be noted as such on a set list, because of the fact that "So Ready" has never once been noted as "So Ready" into "Satellite," despite that's what it says on the album. Like we're just. So let me ask you this: If they opened the set with "So Ready" and then yes. closed the set with "Satellite," yep. would Neil call the "So Ready" unfinished? No. Yes. No. <laughs> And if they played it two shows later, what the, what would the show gap be? Okay. All right. We're, we're not there yet. <laughs> I realized, I um, actually realized before we hit record that because I'm not at home, I don't have my visual aid uh, for when that comes around, but that, you know, we'll, we'll make uh, do. Don't worry. I'll, I'll post it later. Uh, I got it. And, but just so you know, uh, if a song gets finished later in the show or in the set, uh, hence the various echoes that have done that, um, it does not, it does no longer get noted as unfinished on the first one. But we're getting off track here. Does anyone else? Have any yeah. thoughts? No, on, I've got uh, some thought about, thoughts about Madavon. Yes. Uh, so again, I'm very close to the stage. The interesting thing about this Madavon is I don't think anybody was expecting this on this night. And if you listen really closely to the boards, like they start to play, the crowd makes almost no noise. Boards. And then you can hear somebody say, let's fucking go. <laughs> it's you. That is definitely me. Was that you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two members of this podcast made it on the soundboard this fall tour. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Dude, please, I was please do not aspire to, to that. Please, yeah. everyone, but, anyone listening. No, like it was not intentional. I just was really excited. And uh, this Madavon is actually really cool. It reminds me a lot of the Cap Madavon that a lot of people really like. Yet yep. this one doesn't get fluffed similarly, which is weird. Has a really extended free space segment in it, just like the Cap Madavon does, and really long extended outro. Um, yeah, you know, I was given the the amount of guitar playing that actually happened earlier in the set because Peter did play a ton of guitar in the set. I was kind of hoping for like more guitar, and, like having this be like a really killer Rick and Peter on guitar Madavon, but didn't happen. But I did appreciate the drone core into Dawn. That was really, really cool. Um, and like, I love the, you know, just Don as an encore. It's absolutely killer, man. It was encore, so much fun. If you will. Yeah. A yeah Don I, like encore. Encore. I like the set too. I think just like another one in terms of like on paper, great songs came out, kind of got everything, a little bit of every, a little touch of, you know, you get your Rockdale, Butter Rum, Agreed. I remember us watching and then it's sort of like that that song in particular is one that we're just seeing like left turns it's like here's your song structure and then it's just sort of pushing out which is great and we've we've talked a little bit about that like yeti is another song that sort of has taken off and kind of done some different stuff which is good so we like that um i sort of remember as we were watching this like sos kicked up and lo and behold we would see it later on but it was like it just it felt like they were going to break it up. It sort of it placement wise was a little weird and um, uh, kind of we weren't, you know, we had a good chunk of the set. So it's like it wasn't going to be um, second slot, you know, prior to the set closer or second last song, if you may. Uh, but yeah, I, I liked once again, sort of getting into the flow of it. I thought in terms of how they sounded tight, good jams, nothing, you know, magnificent. But like Neil said, Good Madavon, great opening show. And then, uh, yeah, just everybody likes Don. So, I mean, I, I get it. They, they love uh, it. Except, yeah. for, except for Brian Brickman. He does not. Um, okay. He, so. But he's wrong. No uh, idea what that so, is. B, would you like to take us into Boston Night 2 here? Oh, yeah. Great city. <laughs> <laughs> B-Max. No North Quincy. <laughs> All right. 
So yeah, so Thursday night was the 14th, uh, back at Harbor Lights. Set one opener, Dr. D, California Magic, lead the way, lead up, ERA, and Empress. A lot of your favorite songs in that set. So, I mean, this was <laughs> <laughs> on lead paper. The way. We say lead on way. paper a lot. Um no, so you know there was another <laughs> show. There's, a, there's there's another show we'll talk about later in the tour with also with with the Doctor Darkness opener and it's you know it's 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 not a bad opener. Um, I think I think later on in the tour, you know they wrap up Doctor Darkness and then drop into like a big All I Need. I'm pretty sure, right? Um, so I think that worked especially well. Um, and then, but yeah, so here you know we get the Doctor Darkness opener. California Magic, which I mean, look, I, I I like these songs. We're joking, but but I, I like these songs. Lead the way, yeah. Play oh, yeah. more. Back in rotation, baby. Yeah, and then we got the, we got the double lead. So lead the way, lead up, and we'll probably. I feel like every time they play lead up, um, you know, we have to comment on how much we all really like this song. So yeah, um, so I, I won't go too far into that uh but yeah well, i love will, will it you, love will you it. comment yeah you, I, I just were... just that's my only comments i love it it's, it's um, a great song. but let me say i mean i will say no I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh you know another big boston earthinger alien uh two so in one year i was actually a little bit surprised that they that they played this at all over these two nights um let alone you know kind of kind of took it way out there again and and of course you know we're talking about the was it March 28th? Was that the somewhere in March of the, you know, earlier in the year when they, when they came through Boston and dropped that big earthlinger alien. So, so yeah, so that's cool. And then, uh, and then an Empress set closer. So, I mean, this is, this is a decent little set and then, yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing too wrong with this set. You know what I mean? It's, uh, you know, I think, I think maybe the dark to darkness opener, and then straight away into California Magic, lead the way. Lead. I think. I think again, maybe you drop a jammer after something. I, I think darkness into a jammer is is how that really fits and flows better for me. But uh, but yeah, nice little set here. I think. I think Earthling or Alien, uh, Earthling or Alien is the you know the standout jam. Um, but uh, Solid Empress to close. So yeah, good start. Good start to night two. I think this one feels like it's just like another night we'll talk about later at, later at the end of the tour where it's like for me in, in hearing this is kind of you have four opening songs yes. all to start the show and it's it it just like that's not what this band is at times so i think it's it sort of is a little odd when they go straight this is like straight rock or in terms of just like those songs are straightforward they're straight ahead you know lead the way can open I could see lead up open it, it, it may be a second song, but, but it just sort of felt you don't really get anything until there. And yes, we talked about on paper, this is night and day from the night before for me. Like if I'm looking at this set, this is always kind of just the past, the earthling and the empress are great to finish, but it just, it didn't grab me in the same way. I'll admit as the same, the first night for sure. Yeah. It, it's it'd be your point about them playing another big earthling here is also interesting because, you know, the year started off with two really awesome earthling jams. You know, you had the cap one, which is still one of my favorite jams of the year. Uh, I think a lot of us would agree, except for a certain guy who doesn't like the song and docked points for jams because of that. Um, but then you got the big one in Boston a couple of weeks later. And then since then, you know, it was kind of relegated for most of spring and summer into these like 10, 11 minute kind of funk jams. And so it was cool to hear it kind of come out of its shell again um, with, with this one here in Boston, you know? So I think, you know, if Goose is playing in Boston, you can, you can bank on a pretty, on, on a strong earthling or alien. Um, but you know, this is a great one, you know, lower down on the playlist uh, right now, but it's very, very enjoyable jam. And as you said, this, this set kind of needed a jammer, just like the second set from night one, you know, you were looking for that as we got on and the Modavon came at the perfect time where it was like, we need something, we need some improv in this set kind of outside the box. Um, it came at a point in the set where we did need that again. You know, Dr. D. Callie reminds me a lot of putting Atlas Dogs and Butterflies together in the first set on night one. It's the, these first set songs that are very well played, uh, but they're as expected. Lead the way, you know, 
great pick here. Love that it's back in rotation. We saw it three times on this tour, which is awesome. Um, Peter's been doing some really awesome stuff with it. You know, we were hearing the last couple of years using the vintage vibe a lot in the jam. Uh, This tour, he used the organ uh, for this kind of like bedrock of just like, like bright soaring texture underneath uh, Rick's soloing, which is really great. Uh, Neil's still waiting for that 20 minute version that will no doubt come someday. Yeah. Um, Well, yeah, that's, that's all I got to say on this set. Yeah. So I I will say this Uh, lead the way is not an (laughs) opener necessarily. (laughs) It is somewhat of a jammer. You do get a little bit of a jam. A little bit. So, and the jam in this is absolutely gorgeous, as it always is, right? But this one is particularly beautiful. And then having been in attendance, I will say this, uh, lead the, or sorry, lead up, just absolutely hit, which is weird because if you think about this audience, Goose has not played Boston proper much. And it's certain they certainly haven't played a venue of this size in Boston ever. And so there were thousands of new fans there, right? Just so, out of curiosity, what what is the cap? Uh, I want to say it's like six thousand. Capital 000. Theater. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Um, I want to say it's like five to six k, which is gotcha. way more than you know the biggest venue they've played here, which was the Roadrunner, which I don't even know. That's like thirty five hundred, maybe, maybe four thousand. I could be wrong on that though. But in any case, lead up just absolutely crushed, and everybody seemed to know the words. It was remarkable. Um, so that one actually hit really well. So in terms of vibe at the show, that was actually really cool. And then the Erlinger Alien in the show, if we haven't really talked about the jam itself. It's really, really good. And if we're going to talk about stacking Earthlinger Aliens from Boston against each other, I'm taking this one. I was in attendance for both. And this one have, has elements of like the Earthling or Aliens that I really, really love, like from last summer. Mm. Um, there is a very ridiculously spacey weird part in the middle of this that it's just I don't know it was really good it hit really good live and it it holds up on re-listen and then actually on the back half of this is something that we're not used to which is like a decidedly not earthling or alien sounding jam it is not like a funk fest it is not people just ripping on solos it's just something else entirely and it's really good I think that's biggest when when these when this song can stay away from that structure just yeah. kind of passing it around, Peter Clav, a little too much, more bit bass, and it's kind of this trading off. And it, it's it's once somebody bends down, oh, sorry, that's him. Somebody <laughs> leans down to their board and maybe starts tweaking with some some effects, some knobs, working knobs. Yeah, knob, knob, twi- knob twisting Nobbing. does Nobbing. this song very well, I think, and it it just. It needs that. It's sort of it. it it's either going to go two ways. It's sort of like you said, Ryan, 12 to 13, 15 minute stock, or we're kind of going to get a little exploratory. And it was good to see it break out of it. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, B set two. Yeah. Good I actually set. don't have, I don't have either Boston Earthling or Alien on my playlist. Just, I think mm. Cap is the only one that made my playlist, but and you have it lower than it should be. Yeah. <laughs> the whole world is surprised. We appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. I think, I, I think when, I think when Peter said mostly the plants, I, I, I started docking. Those <laughs> alien jams, you know what I mean? I just, as a I, conscientious I a, vegan, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. took offense. Yeah. yeah. But he's back to only, so I don't know. Maybe I need to take a re-listen. Okay. So set two, we got the, the, all I need, which one? Not the, not the slow melodic fast. version, not the fast version. It's but it's a tribute. It's a tribute. It's not even the, it's not even there. All I need. Joby, Joby. <laughs> Are you going to keep played. talking, or do you want? Do you want to play? <laughs> I, was, I was whispering. Dramatic was pause. Kevin, Kevin yeah. and I were whispering. Oh, okay. Um, Sweet nothings. Okay, and then uh, so then we get the thatch. Everything must go. Feel it now. Drip field, and then encore that shit. Let's go. Hot tea. Yeah. Hot tea. Hot tea in the encore spot. This was that. That was a that was an encore. That shit, by the way, approved by Rick uh, on the day after show. This was the day after show where he made an appearance uh, in, a, in and, the towel, right? He was yeah. In the towel. Uh, no, he was just shirtless after playing oh. frisbee. Um, but he oh. he very much enjoyed the term I encore was, that shit. Uh, just I like looking, to, just like to put that out there. I anyway, B. Sorry. Is that a can? Is that a is that a candle? So real quick, real quick, uh, my thoughts here on this set. Um, great set. 
I'm not a huge, huge fan of this cover. I got to be honest. I mean, I, I'm that, that's just, it is what it is that those are my thoughts. Um, give me, not a uh, so DJ there's guy. three, so there's, so, so there's three all I needs now. And in my opinion, there's only one they should play. So, um, <laughs> the fast one, leave the other yes. two. No, you gotta play, you play the slow one. There's a reason nah. that, that the fast one got, got benched. Um, I know, I know, so, I know. so yeah. I like the fast so, one. Uh, like but that's cool. Hey, look, it's it's cool that they have a relationship and they and they you know they're they're doing these things together. So uh, good. And stuff. that's good stuff. LPGOB that recently worked with Taylor, Taylor. Swift, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a it's a big deal. It's amazing. Yeah. It's like Goose yeah. is almost related to Taylor Swift. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be a world tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they're gonna have it. They're gonna have a fifteen minute set uh, where they're gonna play California Magic, <laughs> Silver Rising, and Atlas Dogs every night. <laughs> No, go. they play lead up. They play lead oh, up for sure. sure. Yeah, you're right. That's California true. Magic, Silver Rising, lead okay, up. Okay, so anyway. so this so this thatch is really really good. Yep. Um, yes. I, I want to say um, that I have this thatch fairly highly ranked as far as as far as fall thatches go. No, but even there's so many good thatches that we're going to talk about um, tonight, and then the next day, the separate day that you listen to part two, but. This one, <laughs> or whatever you time it out to be, could be the seventh day. Yeah, yeah. So this is thatch number three from this tour. Uh, third place thatch for me, uh, but this is a really good one, and it goes to some really cool. They break it down, um, they take it a little bit dark, spacey. Uh, really, really like this version. Uh, reminds me a bit of of, of the Warfield uh, version, which I think the Warfield version got a little more funky. Um, but, but they both went to kind of some similar kind of, uh, broken down slow spots. So, so yeah, really, really big fan of this thatch highlight of the set for me. Uh, everything must go is also really good. And it, I think we were all wanting, you know, I think, I think we were all wanting to see some bigger jams out of everything must go. And there's some foreshadowing here because yeah, they, they're, they're, they're going to get to, they're going to get to the all timer, um, in, in in part two of, the, of this episode and then yeah feel it now drip field to close the set and then and then encore that hot tea so yeah i mean nice little set here yeah no, really really dig it this is a really excellent second set um i i contrary to you i actually i really love <laughs> i really love the lpgob uh all i need i think it, i think it's a great song fits rick's vocal range and has some jam potential so i hope this isn't just a one-off uh, you know, I, I did actually expect it to pop up a second time, uh, at least on, on the tour. It's in some fashion, whether it was when they were playing a festival with LP in Oregon or later on on the West Coast. Um, but I, I hope this song comes back. I hope I get to see it at some point because I, I think it's a great song. And again, we saw a little bit of the jam potential uh, in, in this version. And so it could get there. And yeah, this thatch is a, a force. Uh, you know, they, they come out, they come out. It, it's amazing. You know, really awesome synth textures from Peter in this one, uh, just really working that profit. Um, but mm. it, it's, it's amazing. And I actually, I had this a little bit lower. I hadn't listened to it in a couple of weeks. Um, I've been, you know, cause of the, the one that will come a little bit later. Um, but I, I went back and listened to it this morning and I was like, Oh, I have this much too low on my playlist. And so it moved up my playlist this morning. Um, and I'm probably going to go listen to it again later because it's really, really good. Um, just EMG's dark. beginning right yeah. here too. And and yeah, right. everything must go. You know, we, we had the version in Asbury Park uh, that right. was really good earlier in the summer. But this one, again, vintage vibe. Continuation. This, this, this Boston run was the two nights of the vintage vibe. Peter was really enjoying that new variable voice control that I talked about. But it sounds great here. Aggressive driving groove. I love this song. I love this jam. It is it, it at this point. This is one of those songs that works anywhere in a show. They're going to start it, and I'm going to be excited about the song that they're playing and the jam that we're about to get. And it can finish with a bang. You know, we'll hear a set closer later in the tour. But everything must goes awesome. And then the, the set just an encore, just you know, perfect. Feel it now, drip field, hot tea. Put a bow on it. Done. Yeah, I mean, yeah. set list construction oh, wise, it doesn't get much better than this. And like new goose, right? This is new as of the last, you know, year and a half, basically. Oh yeah. Every song. What you would and think of in terms of set list structure. And then like, so, you know, the, the LPGOB all I need, I think is like pretty good. I don't know if it's like a second set song, but I do love it. I think like you said, Ryan, it fits Rick's vocal range. I think it actually does have potential to jam. 
it does a couple of things that I think are like pretty exciting. Uh, and yeah, I hope they play it again. They didn't play it for the whole rest of this tour. I'm, I was expecting this to be played again because it's certainly, it's not done, right? Like they didn't show up and like, this is the final version of this song. This is the one that's going to be like written in stone. So I think they put a lot of effort into the song. They recorded it. They certainly sound checked it a ton of times because I heard it. So they sound checked it at Portland. So, I mean, you know, I hope they do play it again. I hope they explore where they can take the song because I think it can actually be really cool. And I'm like just shocked they didn't play it like at some of the festivals that they were at. It just yeah. made sense to me that they would. Um, and just real quick before I, I kind of finish up here, um, this thatch is great. And I really loved it at the time. This first like part of the tour, I thought it was the jam of the first part of the tour. And I think the interesting thing about this thatch is that it is like a midpoint in between the thatch is that we get later in this tour and the thatch that we got at SPAC. And, you know, this song has been having a, an incredible metamorphosis over a short period of time from, you know, just a few months ago, it was just a, a short kind of funk song that they played and just jammed into the middle of a set. And that was it. Then you got like a 20 minute version out in San Francisco. Then you got, what we got at SPAC and then you got this. And then this was kind of the, the jumping off point for what we're getting later on in this tour. And I, I don't know. It's just, I, I think this is a notable version of this song because it is, it is, it is on that trajectory of where the song is going. So yeah, I, I think it's really cool. And then of course, everything must go again, when we're talking about trajectories and things growing this, everything must go, I think is on that whole trajectory with the, everything must go from Asbury park that Brian, that you said, and then it just keeps getting bigger and bigger until we get an absolutely astonishing version later on down the road. The drip field that ends this show is is really, really good. It's fast. Uh, and it's it's got energy and it's short, but I really it's enjoy great. this drip field. So. Thank you, Neil. Kev, you had something to say there? Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, I just wanted to make a quick comment about the LP, GOB, All I Need uh talking to fans that you know they don't listen to goose like we do they're not dissecting and analyzing jams so on and so forth that exists it can be a divisive song like a love you love it or you hate it sort of thing uh i'm kind of in the middle uh and i would like to reserve judgment a lot of what neil said i wanted to actually agree with while he was talking to it and i didn't want to bring the conversation back there uh, which is why I was trying to jump in when I did. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Kev. But I love the fact that they're taking chances. Like that is like the essence of what I, I I will continue to love about this band is them doing something like this, this collaboration and taking chances like this that might upset some of the established fans, uh, you know, but it, it it's the, that sort of risk-taking, chance-taking sort of thing that you want to see from this band as it continues to grow, as it hits, you know, these next next phases of who Goose is going to be. Absolutely. Very, very well put, Kev. Uh, let, I appreciate let's... the time. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I yield the rest time. of my time. <laughs> 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 let's uh, let's let's move inland a little bit here uh, to Borderland to the Festival. Ge- to, the, to the gentleman from Toronto. Thank you. Uh, to Borderland Festival in East Aurora, New York, just outside of Buffalo. I was there. Uh, this was this was a very Toronto very festival. Thank you. Toronto. 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 Uh, they, this Toronto. was a fun set. You know, they, they had two hours here. Uh, Flow Down, Mr. Ash from Pancakes, Honey Bee, Writing a Novel, Creatures, Rosewood, Animal, Slow Ready, Arcadia. I'm not going to talk about anything here except for the Rosewood. Uh, you know, you've got this massive 26 minute Rosewood um, with Griffin and Taylor from Dawes. You know, guys, we've seen sit in with the band before Fred Fest. Um, you know, Griffin sat in at the Newport Blues Cafe in 2022. Uh, or sorry, that was Taylor uh, Griffin sat in in Austin at Stubbs last fall on Rockdale, which was fun. This is the first time we've seen the two of them go out into a huge jam like this. Uh, and this was really cool. Shout out to Jeb holding down that D chord on guitar. Uh, no <laughs> monitors, couldn't hear anything except for where he was standing on stage. Uh, just a champion. You know, he was telling me he couldn't even he couldn't hear himself on Peter's guitar unless he was standing right in front of Peter's guitar amp. But then if he was standing right there, he could only hear himself, the keyboards, and Griffin on his drum kit. So he couldn't hear the rest of the band. And so he'd move. 
<laughs> then he wouldn't be able to hear himself. So uh, shout out to Jeb for powering through that, uh, hitting that D chord. Uh, but th- this Rosewood is amazing. Uh, you know, great guitar interplay uh, between Taylor and Rick in the first half. And then I feel like in the second half of the jam, even in the moment and on re-listen, it kind of feels like th- there's not really a sit-in happening anymore. You know, it's, it's, it's not as present as in that first Rosewood jam. And we talk all the time about, you know, the duality of Rosewood jams with the first big peak, and then they go off into something different. This is just like amazing major key bliss peak. People have compared it to, I know you rider a bit. I think, uh, I think that's just cause like the progression, but this is just a really excellent jam. Uh, it's on the playlist. Um, you know, and I, I, I love being there. It was, it's great. It's a great. Listen, uh, be shaking his head. Uh, but we're going to let Neil talk about it first. Oh, well, so I just wanted to uh, pick up where you were saying people say it sounds like I know you writer. I am one of those people. Maybe that's where you got that idea from. It and I, be. I think that for a couple reasons. Um, one, there's a very full sound to the band. You have two guitars. You have two drummers drumming. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Three guitars. Three. Do not forget yeah. about our man Jeb. Yeah. All right. So he's uh, occasionally hitting chords Obvious. in the key of D, which kind is not disrespectful. He's not just like striking a D chord and nothing else. The key of He's D. He's a strummer and a drummer. Yeah, th- there are there are more than one chord in in the key of D. Um, in any case, uh, so the sound is full. You have piano and three guitars and two drummers drumming enthusiastically um, in a way that probably isn't typical of what Goose would normally do, where you kind of have a drummer and a percussionist dynamic. There are songs that obviously have like two drummers attacking but goose never really truly has this full sound so it does feel very grateful dead like i think taylor's approach in this also was very kind of bobby like it all sounded good and then i i want to really note this jam because this shows up again and again and again throughout Mm. this tour without obviously dawes but (laughs) this whatever theme they find in this they liked especially rick and they they use it often through the remainder of this tour, and I'll I'll point it out a couple times yeah. as we go through this. But um, other thing that I want to say about the set, it really feels like the only thing we want to talk about is this rosewood. But the creatures that comes before this is actually worth a listen because there is like the end couple minutes of this creatures is so unique and different, and it's gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful. And if they actually extended that, we'd be talking about this jam. Like a lot. You know, if they if they played Honeybee for 15 more minutes than they did, we'd be talking about that one, too. Um, I'm just saying. Oh, we, oh, we'd be talking about it. And we will talk about <laughs> it Honeybee. when they play Honeybee for more than a few minutes in an entirely different song. And we'll well, talk I'm, about I'm talking later. about I'm talking about Honeybee here because uh, it was Rosh Hashanah. Uh, and so while while uh, our nice Jewish boy, uh, resident Jewish boy Spuds did not give a shout out to uh, the, the new year. Um, you know, Peter offered us honeybee. Uh, for those who don't know, we eat apples and honey on Rosh Hashanah, uh, celebrate, you know, a sweet new year. Uh, so thank you for that, Peter. M- much appreciated. B, you look, you look like you had thoughts on this Rosewood. Yeah. So <laughs> the Dawes, the, the Dawes guys, Hey, they like to jam, right? Uh, yes. we learned apparently. That. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's, I think it's a great jam. Um, but it's, it's Not just, and, and at this point in the tour, I mean, you know, the, there hadn't been a, there, there hadn't been a, you know, very many, um, you know, really big jams. So, so, you know, it was kind of on the playlist there as I was collecting my fall stuff and, but it just kind of continued to fall and, and I, and I like it. I just feel that it, uh, you know, it kind of, it kind of stays, kind of stays pretty, pretty straight for the most part. And, and I think you, I mean, I think you kind of would expect that with guests. I mean, you know, they're definitely they're definitely improvising, right? Um, but I think I, I think with different guests, you'll see kind of different different levels of you know, kind of kind of how far out there they're willing to go, or or how far out there maybe the guest is is willing to go or push things, you know, when when they're out in front. So so yeah, so I just kind of felt like for the length of this one, I I wish maybe it would have. They would have just taken it out there a little bit more. Yeah, I think I think that'd be really interesting to see, um, you know, with with another guitarist on stage, right? That they, they, we're not used to seeing out there. I'm not talking about Jeb, you know, um, but but yeah. So so that that was really it. Um, you know, otherwise, I mean, 
certainly I think I think this is this is a, a, a pretty festy set, which is what we expected. So um, and and Neil's right about the creatures. I mean, it actually it, it does have it does and and that's something that we see from creatures a lot. Frankly, you know, it's you you'll get seventeen minutes of ordinary creatures, and then and then they'll go somewhere, but then they end it. You know, and yep. that that might be the one that might be the, the the song, the one song they do that the most. You know what I mean? That they 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 give you a couple minutes, you know, two or three Your or boss? four minutes of something. And then you're kind of left maybe, you know, wanting a lot more. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, anyone else got thoughts on this before we uh, head to uh, the show? Ohio of Michigan. Deep it's block. a great set uh festival wise it's a great set right they're and again like they're just uh you know b was talking about collecting for his 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 jotty bracket goose is out there collecting fans with these with these sets of like, and 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 honestly I, i'm being serious about this like honestly they're the amount of people that are new to goose that are like holy shit i'm gonna come back to these guys uh, i have several again local examples people that i've hung out with uh people that i work with uh that were casually you know asking about these folks uh that are now fans you know they're on board and it's it's sets like this that don't necessarily you know have us spending a lot of time talking about jams, but they're they're sets that are allowing Goose to to really show themselves who they are to new fans and allowing them to accumulate new fans. And I think it's fucking awesome. Very well put, Kev. Can we just can we just give Kev a round of applause and yeah, appreciate I agree. You can. You he's, can. Yeah, you he's, can. He's here for the every man. Of, every I, Kev. I, yeah, yeah, every Kev. And and, Kevin and, I think the last six pods, if not day after shows too, Kev will always interject. Hey, let's get some perspective here. There's people out there. We have to get perspective. And listen, <laughs> hey, if, if anybody knows knows about collectors, it's this fucking guy. You know? How <laughs> dare you? How dare you? I have a good eye. The I have a good eye, okay? finger in the West. Uh, nobody in the Rocky Mountain area hits add to cart quicker than this guy it's, does coming it's for your merch he's gonna it's he's, he's he told me last time we were hey now out, pay he's, now he's looking at <laughs> yes, he's looking now. at he's looking at maybe a brick and mortar option to start unloading some of that stuff in, in the next couple of years so Ain't stay happening. tuned for that stay tuned for that yeah. not a, not a flipper not a flipper it's time, just a it's time for detroit he's it's an time appreciator for detroit. it's time Let's for the show ohio of michigan am i right neil Oh my D12. God! Please, let's not. I, you know what? I totally forgot about that until I looked it's at back. the set list. And I was like, "Oh, <laughs> wait a minute!" It's a disgrace. Um, but uh, who's it, doing this one? Who's, who's oh, up I'm doing this one. So yeah, we're gonna we go. we're gonna transition from disgrace to Kev, and uh, we're at the Masonic <laughs> Temple in Detroit, which isn't necessarily a hometown uh, show for our boy Captain Incredible Jeff. No uh, AC, but it's a home state. It's a home state show uh, for him. Uh, first set, uh, one of my favorites is an opener, Instant uh, instant Energy, Turbulence in the Night Rays, uh, followed up by Peter's Ode to Lake Michigan, uh, The Whales, uh, Wisteria Lane into uh, Eddie Grant cover Electric Avenue, and the set is rounded out by Redbird. I loved this show. I was here, uh, made the trip from Milwaukee, last minute decision, really happy I went. Yeah, like you said, Kev, Turbulence. It, we saw a lot of these, I think, the sort of the one-two combinations, you know, whether it's turbulence, butterflies, whales, Atlas dogs, you know, just all of these songs that we've sort of talked about. And um, I think they like getting those two-parters. As we've said too, another big indicator that we've talked about on the pod and other people sort of recognize, you get Peter going kind of early in a show, especially with a song of his, I think it lends to the benefit of the, the show itself you know he he's sort of coming in whether that's a flea whether that's butterflies like you said so sort of just getting him not only playing and playing some guitar and maybe getting some solos but also singing um standard pretty two opening tracks but this is all about the wisteria here i think it's just um very very i mean <clears throat> i was a little surprised to hear it i'll admit start up and then the way it just kind of took off, um, you know, it's got it's got kind of 
it's got some some good moments throughout the middle of it. I think the jam in and of itself is is good. It's 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 maybe great. It's not sort of outstanding, but a lot of people um, tack on kind of this last little four to five minute section um, where Peter kind of jumps in and takes over on the keys and kind of gets playing. Um, sort of sort of pushes Rick to kind of keep the jam going, and then Ben picks it back up, and it sort of brings us into this very beautiful. Um, completely left field space for Wisteria, especially out of the jam that it went from. Um, we had some good sort of down tempo moments in the middle and stuff, but it sort of just picked it back up. And then you get this nice transition into Electric Ave, um, Brian's favorite, crowd favorite. Neil wants to say something about the Wisteria. So we're going to go there because this Wisteria is that good. We got to keep talking about it. Yeah, well, no, I like just in general, I want to pick up where you left off. I, I, this Wisteria is good. And we were just talking about that Borderlands Rosewood. There, There is a jam on the back half of this Wisteria that is really reminiscent of what happens in that Borderlands Rosewood and that kind of second half of the jam in the back end. Um, so that's one point about that. And it's right before the the inverted heartbreaker, as some people will call it. Love that. Um, oh, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it gets really kind of heavy rock and roll, like more rock and roll than Goose gets typically. So this is a pretty cool wisteria, but uh, I'll, I'll back off for a minute. I've got things to say about this electric Ave and um, and the Redbird. Redbird also, is great. yeah, yeah. Um, so did you have things about the the electric Ave, or are you you good on that? Because I, I've got I've got stuff I got to say. Me, oh, take on the me. street. There is violence. <laughs> take uh, no, well, here, let me say this first. There, there will be violence in Salida <laughs> if they keep playing Electric Ave. Holy! <laughs> in 2023, Electric Ave doesn't suck. I'm, I'm it, saying I don't right think now. it does. I agree with Neil. Great. I yeah, agree with Neil. I don't think it ever has better. stuck. Yeah. Listen, listen to the lyrics, man. That song resonates. Um, beyond the lyrics, there. I mean, this, this. There's a very clear electric Ave section to this, and then there's like whatever it is they're doing after that, and it's a launching point for a jam that actually is really good, and it feels to me like the Redbird jam before the Redbird jam. So we were talking earlier about how kind of Goose led into. Uh, look out Cleveland by playing the jam before the song that's happening here in my opinion and maybe I'm wrong but go back and listen to it You'll, you might hear you can, it you can pick it up it's sort of I mean like we've talked you got you got the Knights uh what is that Legend Valley didn't they, Knights and White Satin they, yeah the Knights and then and they all I need yeah 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 and then and then there's another sort of long-winded projection of these I agree I think sometimes when they're kind of leading into these covers it sort of is like there's elements of the song that they're they're touching on. Um, I, I thought, yeah, you could pick up on the electric Ave and then they leave it. They go into the, the Led Zeppelin section if you want. And then they have that little piano jam at the end where Peter, the sort of happy one, and then they come back to the, the electric Ave. And uh, I think it's great. It's sort of just touching on these these little spaces. The the first, you know, five, ten minutes of Wisteria, too, gets gets into some good space it sort of hits those sort of down tempo trevor more like liquidy bass and, yeah. and and a little bit more more synth and kind of like sort of washed out spaces for the band and and i think it was nice to get this was sort of the first jam if i think back of all the shows right where we had where it's 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 a little it it is it provides sort of those spaces you had the rosewood you had the madavan you have the thatch which sort of is immediately driving whereas wisteria kind of needs that entry point to sort of just find its find its platform yeah and i, I think when i wrote the uh jam chart entry for this thing uh for elgoose.net which people should check out if you don't know about the jam charts uh head over to elgoose.net um, that's but, actually where i do my research oh there you go <laughs> um well when i wrote the jam chart entry for this i was struck by you know this is kind of the beginning of that quote unquote fall 2023 uh theme uh you know we see this popping up a lot do you just mentioned that slowing down kind of thing peter hits on that that marimba over top of the piano shows up in a lot of jams especially later on in the tour uh we see that a lot and i think that that's very emblematic of what a lot of the things that happen on this tour you have these things like the these thatch peaks and like something like the the missoula thatch that we'll get to um where it's just driving you know throughout the whole thing very in your face, uh, you know, Red Rocks, everything must go. Red Rocks, Factory Fiction even. Um, but then you have these jams like this, um, you know, the, the Oakland No Rain we'll talk about, the Vegas Elizabeth, where it's just, it, they hang back more. They, they create more space. And that's something that Goose is getting better and better at doing. 
uh, we kind of saw this start with stuff like the Eugene Bourne uh, earlier this year, where it seems like they're making more of an effort to kind of go in a different direction from just the big peaks that we're used to. And that's, I, I think that's a, a lot of non goose fans is knocks on the band is that, Oh, well, every jam is just a peak, which is not a bad thing. And, you know, we, we all loved the era of goose um, where that was, you know, predominantly the case, but it's the really cool. To jams see them. Man. Yeah. And it's cool to see them moving in a more patient and, and more calm space uh, in some of these jams. Not that this wisteria also doesn't have an excellent big peak because it does. Um, and yeah, and this Peter playful piano outro, I love, uh, if you watch the video that's on YouTube, you can see Rick cracking up at something <laughs> Jeff does off camera. Um, Cause it's Jeff. Uh, and he's usually doing something that will make you crack up if you look at him. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I got there. I love the, the set break banter from the red bird too. Um, you know, they do the set break music. That, that was, that was <laughs> wonderful. You know, they, they, they kind of, they, that's like a fish fall 97 kind of thing or a late nineties kind of thing where they're like over the groove and Trey's like, well, you know, we're going to be right back in 15 minutes. Um, but you know, Peter does that. Jeff took that as the cue to just leave the stage, uh, whether he had to pee or he had a joint waiting for him or whatever it was, uh, or he both. didn't want to stick around. Yeah, exactly. Or both. A joint Some tweets. The bathroom. Some tweets. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Whatever it was that was waiting for Jeff backstage, he didn't want to wait for Peter to finish his, uh, set break rap, not to be confused with the positivity rap. Um, but that, yeah, this was, this was a great first set. Okay, so as usual, I gotta I gotta set the record straight. I like Electric Avenue. Who since and when? So I think I think you got Electric Avenue confused with Disco Inferno a long time ago, and then it just <laughs> kind of it just kind of became a thing. Um, not not not. I I and and I'm actually yeah it, it it's <laughs> it it could lead into a real smooth jam, and, and and I'm often surprised that we actually haven't seen more big jams come out of it. Um, but don't want to spend too much time on Electric Avenue. Uh, this Wisteria, it, this is my third, this is my number three jam of the fall. So, Whoa. you know, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I got it up there too. Yeah, yeah. It's probably the number three Wisteria of the year um, for that Whoa. matter. Though it's not good. Though it's not, there's probably going to be a little bit of a gap after the first two. I think the first two are monsters. Um and then there'll be a little bit of a gap, but this is probably my my next favorite after those two. Um, and then just real quick, yeah, I, I really like this Redbird, and you know, I I think around this time or maybe even later this tour, I, I was I was just thinking a lot about how the average Redbird jam is a really great jam, and it's gotten so much better, just like yeah, standard, yeah. And there's there's definitely some some themes that they'll that they'll kind of repeat. But, but there's a bunch of them, it feels like, you know what I mean? So, so there, there's variance from version to version, but yeah, I kind of, I kind of feel like they're, they're all really strong. And so I kind of feel like this, this song, if we were to look at like, you know, most improved kind of jammers, um, you know, certified bangers. Yeah, I, I really think that uh, the Redbird would, would would probably be right up there, um, you know. So yeah, yeah, really, really good stuff here again uh, in this Redbird. And uh, yeah, between between the Wisteria and the Redbird, um, and with you know with the Turbulence opener, that's a decent little set. As I, I've re-listened to a few of these tracks a lot. Yeah, for, like I, I do want to point out that this show flows incredibly well. And you were kind of touching on that for a minute, Jive. Um, and so there is an element to the show that just enhances it and just how well they're they're kind of going through the set list, how everything matches up, how tight everything is in the show. Um, other thing is you mentioned this as your third favorite Wisteria of the year. The other two kind of clear cut, you know, head of the pack, as it were, are struggling uh, <laughs> for descriptives at this point yeah you know the sylvie and the ryman if you're listening and you're like what are the other two it's the, That's the one madison and nashville. nashville yeah um no yeah. B, we're not going to talk about nashville on this podcast i've been at all three of those <laughs> Love yeah. it. nashville was Love definitely it. on this tour yeah um, really was. <laughs> was. Uh, uh, but so really quick i, I want to talk about the yeah. redbird because i haven't had a chance to talk about redbird yet um this i mean this redbird's really cool 
it has elements of the the cross-eyed intro gems and contains elements of it does it absolutely does it's of. sick and they like they don't overdo it on this which actually makes it really cool and i think one of the things that people are going to say about people are going to say about this redbird is that well there isn't enough of it for it to be good reba bro and and then you talk about other redbirds on this tour you're going to say well there isn't enough of that redbird for it to be good this song is becoming like that around 17 minute banger on this tour that they're not playing any more than that. And the jams are incredibly efficient. They're all very good. There are two more that are going to happen that are absolutely awesome. This one is awesome. And then the next two that we're going to talk about are awesome. And they're all under 20 minutes. And even though they're under 20 minutes, doesn't make them bad jams. And, and that's important. And I think this is like an evolution of Goose's music. Efficient. Because we're so used to like saying, well, it has to be at least 20 minutes for it to be really good. And I, I just don't think that's true anymore. And we're starting to see that. I mean, Fish has nailed this a long time ago. They do like awesome jams in under 15 minutes. 7, 10, and, 99 chalk dust. Yeah. And so, <laughs> you know, it's important to note this, that these these jams are good and they are on the shorter side. Thank you, Neil. Collecting shall we, fans. Shall we, hit, shall we hit the second set here? Yeah. As we transition in the set two, we get a great blue cover of Yeti. Right. Uh, okay. Are you going <laughs> to argue with me as I'm introducing the set? A little Jesus. bit. Okay. Get, sorry. Uh, That's and what then we, we do here, in, Kevin. And, and, and then uh, we smoothly transition into Born, an abbreviated Born, uh, Hunger Sight, the Clash cover of Rock the Casbah, a Jeff specialty. Uh, 726 for our own Captain Incredible. It was meant plus for him, Redbird. I'm pretty sure. Always uh, plus his Redbird, of course, yes. Yeah. Uh, followed by a very long arrow. Uh, and, of course, we encore out with Silver Rising. I, I mean, I'll, I'll kick off the set. I think it's Please. a solid set. There's, there's not a ton to write home about. You know, we see the beginning of Born going back to, it seems, Born in the fall. Can you so correct far. me on Yeti real quick? I, I mean, it technically is a great blue cover. Oh, okay. That's like so saying, right. Let's no, move on. But that's like saying <laughs> a Trey Anastasio song is a cover in a fish show. It's not. It, it's okay, written by okay. Peter. Okay. Okay. It's it's an original song. Um. So the, well, the, and I love we should Ray talk blue. to the team at Elgusta.net about that. Yeah, love we should. It, there's no one. There's no one from that represented on this podcast. Uh, so love great blue. Um, uh, great blue is great. But so born in the fall so far, 2022 and 2023, born in the fall has not jammed. Uh, I, I don't think so. Correct me if I'm wrong. But it has not. I'm fairly certain that it has not. Uh, which is it's all the same. Almost criminal. Um, I, I think, you know, that there, there are better launch pad borns to come later in the tour. I think here, a big jammed out born, you know, in this set would have been amazing, you know, continuing to build off what they did in Eugene and Louisville. Uh, so hopefully, you know, may, may, maybe in Europe, may, maybe that'll happen. Uh, but otherwise, you know, this Yeti is not what's to come later in the tour. Um, this hunger site is solid. Uh, yeah, actually, you know, it's shorter good. version. There's going to be another one around the same length a little bit later in tour that is definitely uh, much better. Always love a nice let Jeb sing opportunity here. Casba is fun. Um, this seven two six, a little bit more emotional than normal. Rick kind of threw himself into this guitar solo here. It's really, really beautiful. It was uh, dedicated to Jeff. He should have exactly. The, shout out Captain Incredible. This is this is his show. Uh, I saw him right. looking down at Jeff. He was right yeah. below me. Rick if they made Jeff. eye contact, it was probably yeah. very emotional, and I probably. understand where you know yeah. that sort that sort of playing came from. Yeah, it's absolutely. And then and then we get an arrow to close the set uh, with a silver rising encore. So solid stuff. Twenty 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 three arrows. I mean, this solid. ain't one of them. Even, solid. Yeah. Even yeah. Well, no, 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 not. But even like, I think fortunately this song. Yes, once we leave the composition, it's. It's as good of a song as ever as we know to go get a drink, catch a purr if you may, and come back because we got ten minutes, you know. So <laughs> you're there, you know. And then you probably got you probably got another five to seven before maybe we're getting into some good stuff. So. <laughs> but I, I still like I. It's tr- it's progression from 2020 and early, you know like thinking back to South Farms 2020 and like it was like oh yes this song has got some potential, and then it just kind of lost its way, but. I thought this 
set hit better in person. No, I thought it, I thought it hit better in person. I think it's lost a little bit. The hunger site's good, um, but yeah. I, I'm going to go on brand here. This is a good arrow. It's good. It's not as good as other arrows they played in 2023. It's not a bad arrow. I'm not. I won't Arrow's hear fun. such nonsense or tomfoolery. It's like you know. Not, I mean, okay arrows are good this year. There, there's no yeah. like skippable arrows. That's debatable. Think. I mean, if you stack this against some other arrows, <laughs> maybe from this year. Um, yeah. But jeez, there's um, the, you know I. So, the, <laughs> there's something special about the looks that B gives Neil when he's talking. <laughs> well, see, well, we're Even not going to agree um, on everything. Uh, uh, we we do agree there. on everything, except for when we talk about Arrow. I do when like they this lock eyes. Yeah. There are arrows from the past that I like far less than the Sarah. Let's put it that way. <laughs> um, also, the slide guitar is back in Born. That's cool. Yes. Woo! That is true. Really cool. And Peter didn't mess it up as sorry. That was another one. It was another one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> talk about that. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> that happens. You know, you gotta pick up a slide. Playing we slide did. I remember that. Art. I was watching. I, I I remember writing you guys actually while Bourne was there and it hadn't hit because Ryan hates when I when I uh, spoiler like the split open. Hey, there's now. a buffer, man. Thirty second I know. buffer. No, it's, the webcast is behind. Respect the buffer. But I did. I remember saying I was like, before it even happened for you guys, I was like, slide. And you were like, yes. <laughs> it was exciting. Yeah. So that was good. It's definitely yeah. So that's exciting. But like like others, I'm left wanting for all of the other amazing different types of er- er- borns that are played. Right. Like play the synth build. Jam it. Like, I mean, like fast. Slow. I mean, like just pick one. Um, just, just not this one. On yeah yeah just put a jam on it like i don't know like you don't, you don't like so the, good the, the, you don't like the quick play here's born all right we're gonna I, move on i i do agree that like goose needs more shorter songs to kind of throw in here and there this, this one, one i just like too much yeah it ain't it it's too good of a song to just do it that and it, walk it. away and, and i will say again that there are times when the born hunger site launch pad segment works there are yeah. times like this where it feels a little bit lackluster where, where it's like you know yeah. Would have liked to jam out of born here. We could have jammed born and gone somewhere else. Exactly, exactly. But then, well, then, <laughs> and then you you get you get the born hunger site, and and so you know you're 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 getting super stoked for that drip. Well, what they and just then sometimes you get casual yeah. earlier, and then yeah. Sharif don't, <laughs> and, and then Sharif don't like it. Yeah, yeah, Sharif. <laughs> Other don't notable like thing about the show before we move on, uh, yeah. which I thought was really funny, is like at the encore break break, Peter was like. It's like, you know, look at that little kid. Shout out to the little kid in the front row. And he's like, hell yeah. And then I think he caught himself like right after. He was like, yeah. I probably shouldn't have said that. Uh, I don't know. It's really good. I thought so. so good, good encore too. But yeah. Um, well, D, and then we made our way. Yeah. Take us to Milwaukee. The hometown boy. Milwaukee. First, first Milwaukee show for the band, which still surprises me. So we got September 17th here. Um, where it was, uh, it's in M- Milwaukee. M- it was no, Milwaukee. What, what venue? That's very important to the narrative High of this show. Life. I will, yeah, the Miller High Life Theater. Which, oh boy, did this become a theme for the show? So, <laughs> actually, actually, this this venue, first time ever here. I grew up. Uh, for those who aren't aware, but obviously it's obvious. I'm from <laughs> Milwaukee. I uh, grew up here. I've lived here. You know. 25 years more or less of my life of 35 years and um this was this was the first time being at this venue i'd heard of it uh it's the paps theater group who owns riverside turner hall and the paps and um puts on great shows from milwaukee brings some great acts and so it was really weird to see them jump obviously to the largest venue of this of this uh management group um promoters and so it's about 4200 i think um a lot of renovations put a lot of money into it really really nice space like you walk in you got like an art deco 1980s or 70s 70s like lobby style lounge with like leds huge bar i mean jesus christ d i feel like i'm fucking there dude if there was ever a space it's called painting a picture ken yeah and he's doing it jesus if there was ever with stairs going up both sides kev like it's legit if there was ever a space for a two or three night run for this band i feel like this is the kind of spot you want because you can come in, you can hang out with your friends before. 
set break you can go and and hang out at set break you have act like the bar access was absurd bathrooms all over um <clears throat> so really good spot super low real close on peter's side on the floor we were right under uh brendan and becca friends of the pod always got to shout them out shout out and um yeah came out firing um i think just really well crafted set list top to bottom so for to start we got jive one opener followed by a ripping 12 minute elizabeth literally uh not alone rarity fourth time played all i need uh the the original slow and melodic virgin <laughs> followed by seekers one into two and First then uh, seekers a very good so ready. Look at so, that! that look at that four, Look at that second quarter right there. The Seekers so ready to close the first set. Oh yeah, dude. Money. I, mean, I think like in terms of what we've said, if we're gonna, ju- I'll jump to the end. If we're gonna put a Seekers in a show, that's the spot for it. Late first set, baby. Put it, late first set. You have some energy to end the night. But I love Jive One as an opener. I think it's like in terms of when I think about this band, energy wise, song like its history. It has. I still want them to like say Will Tony and Jive at some point, you know, like that 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 little lyrical play. Give um, me the studio Moon- version, <laughs> man. Yeah, from Moon Cabin. But great standard opener, good energy. Then we get this Elizabeth um, first first version, and 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 this was what was a great point of of a the a launch pad for this song for the tour. I think it just sort of stood out as something that was brought variety to it, brought emotion, you know, bliss, um, sort of different themes and grooves. So we have our standard like chugal six, seven minutes, you're kind of just pushing out through the song and then it just turns and it's just beautiful bliss. Um, you know, the, the band released it as a video, highly recommend it to check it on you out on YouTube. Like the four or five minutes that leave sort of the standard structure of the song are yeah. Some of the best, some of the best music they put out this this fall for sure. Um, I think just full band communication, <clears throat> really really good. Some followed some, by some beautiful artist, by the way, uh, not me, wrote in the jam chart entry that uh, Rick's guitar tone was sparkling like the champagne of beers, uh, and Woo! that is just that is just beautiful I stuff like. right there. And so as, we'll just jump to the chase here. Throughout this show, Jeb's got a forty of high life uh rick slammed rick 40. his 40 rick slammed his 40 at the end of um the show during uh during tumble or like doobie and tumble and or no i think the white lights and loose he actually and i don't i don't remember who the fan was but he actually autographed Signed that it. fucking thing yep. yeah, yeah, yeah gave it to yeah. somebody <laughs> yeah. so this That's was too just far. like the band was having so much fun um not alone to see that live like i've actually gone back and when i listen to elizabeth not alone like the song is just beautiful. Um, I was really happy to catch it. I had kind of <clears throat> immediately written it off when you, we got, um, what did we get? We got our, our three batch of songs that came out at the same time was Not Alone, lead Feel up. It Now, yep. and lead, lead Up. Yep. So, yep. <clears throat> so I, I sort of was like, okay, Not Alone. It came in Nashville. I wasn't there for that night, but really, really beautiful. Um, all I need, solid, slow build version, just kind of the, um, this is where Getty actually, the venue itself had this great backdrop. So this is where he was actually able to showcase his lights really well. And I think for what was to come, um, painting sort of a lot of very beautiful pictures um, with this huge, huge stage set, set up, just a good slow build version. Seekers 1-2, this is where you want it. And then I thought this So Ready had a, had a great punch on it, actually. I thought it had a little extra, sort of is what leads me at times to be like Team Slow Ready. You get a little variety at times. Um, you, 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 you get some energy here. The, the jam had some, some extra juice. And then Peter, this was where I took a capture. I was like, how can you not see this guy playing guitar and not smile? Like he just, you know, exudes happiness and, and just so such a great you know piece of this band and then to, to for him to be able to step up so unbridled joy yeah, yeah this is this is a really great first set here love the elizabeth uh i mean th- this is again 12 13 minutes whatever it landed at in- incredible uh co- covers an incredible amount of jam uh space i think it was vickers that coined uh elizabeth bliss uh around this time and we see that trend throughout the fall and i hope that continues you know this song 
being a jam vehicle again, which has happened a bunch this year. Um, you know, after Elizabeth kind of took a backseat, it was just kind of this first set rocker for a couple of years. Um, so absolutely amazing to see it do what it does here. It's just absolutely soaring. Um, the, the jam at times reminds me a little bit of the the tab song Valentine, uh, the, you know, the, the jam of that guy, um, which is really interesting parallel there. Uh, definitely not any sort of intention, uh, pure, purely uh, coincidental, uh, but it sounds really good. And yeah, Rick just soars with it. Um, it it's, it's truly amazing. Not alone, coming back. Um, you know, the elderly man screaming for it at a below and Boulder back in June got his wish. Uh, really, really hope wherever he is, uh, wherever he is now, whatever nursing home he's in these days, I, I oh, hope he's geez. happy. Uh, I, I hope he, he knows that it happened. Um, you know, you just, was that fourth or that guy? You just Ryan, was that fourth or third time? That is, that is the back. fourth, not alone. Uh, yeah. so I, I hope. You know, we see it out in Europe and and at Goosemas and next year. Like, I, I hope this song starts to pop up a little bit more often because, man, it's just it's so good. Uh, and the rest of the set's really solid. You know that this we had some really big all I needs earlier in the year. This tour kind of took a backseat in, in a lot of places. Shorter versions. I think that this is the best one of the tour here. Has some dark yeah. themes. 17, 18 minutes. Um, but yeah, lo- looking for secret looking for agent, those man. big guys again. Love love the secret agent man. We'll never yeah. complain about the secret agent yes. man. Uh, and also little long tall glasses from Rick in here. Uh, shout out to I believe it was friend of the pod uh, Justin Bruce uh, who pointed out this tease. Uh, this was a this is a niche tease right here, uh, but it's it's most definitely there. Uh, so th- thank you for that. I one. don't know that. No yeah, I don't know either. Wait, who, no, what, what no, song is that? It, no I, I didn't all. know it either, but then he sent it to me, and it is most definitely a tease. <laughs> who, who, who is the original artist? Uh, ba, 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 ba. Oh, see. What's the name of the song? Leo Long Sayer. Long Tall Glasses. Long Tall Glasses. It's there. Leo it's real. Sayer. It's been vetted by the by the tease committee. Uh, nice. It exists, and you can't mean Submitted me Submitted by Neil. Justin Bruce, Nevada's very own meteorologist. Yes. Yes, thank you very much. Thank all right, well, that, 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 that's all I got to say on the set. Seeker's so ready. There we go. Anyone else got any thoughts before we move on to set two? Jive, go for it. <laughs> I, <laughs> he leaned forward, guys. Jive, I, pause. He's I really sleeping. like Not Alone, uh, <laughs> but I'm not elderly. Debatable. Just middle-aged, <laughs> but I, middle-aged. But I did, I did feel like the band needed to know that that the fans want this song. And so at a Rebelo, just kind of, kind of seized the opportunity. And I mean, I feel like maybe I got results. So it came back. <laughs> let's get it. Let's get it more. Let's see it more. Yeah. The Jive gets results. Let's keep it going. People, people, this is such a great ballad. Like, yep. It's, it's beautiful. You know? Yeah. It's the, so, you know, like so a rise you know is, is another now i think a rise just really hits really well with the revelo and and it just did not as much with goose for whatever reason but not alone this this is an incredible ballad it it kills live in the full band setting at a big show it's this is a great song and and honestly this is this is what if, if I go through their catalog and look at like total times played, this is definitely going to be one of the ones that I'm saying, come on, you, you get, you get, you get, you're missing out. Uh, you know, you should be playing this more. So anyway, that's all I'll say about not alone. I love it. Yeah, I just, not much to add there um, on the not alone thing. Someday we'll get it in the second set cooldown slot, you know, Oof. Will be and then so good. I think it'll crush there. I think it belongs there. It'll be great. This Elizabeth, really quick, something that hasn't been said. If you go back and listen to this Elizabeth, you can hear this. And maybe you can't hear it until somebody points it out to you. But Ryan and I were talking about it earlier. There are elements of, and I'm, I'm shocked you didn't pick up on this, Daniel, um, Dragonfly all over oh, yeah. this thing. Yeah. Like, he plays vibes. like two vibes, and three. Mind you. Two and three notes snippets. No, not vibes. Like he is actually playing two and three notes snippets of Dragonfly and then changing the notes like right after. When I say he, I'm talking about Rick. Um, but there are fingerprints, not elements of Dragonfly all over this thing. 
He just it's never like finishes the riff. Or yeah. he's like playing something else and then he adds part of the riff to it at the end. Um, but I do go back and listen to this, Elizabeth. It is special. It's different than the ones that follow, even though those I think are, you know, quote unquote, better versions of the song. Um, it's, I don't know. I love this, Elizabeth. I think it's really cool. This pairing right here is the the centerpiece yeah. of this, uh, this Elizabeth alone. So, so good. I feel it's a great counterpoint to lead up to. Like, honestly, if you think about that song versus lead up in energy, it's sort of like you could have a second song lead up in a set and a second first set and then second song, second set after a huge jam, not alone. And that would just be like a Rick, like just dropping it all over a show. Yeah, so much emotion. Uh, so good. Yeah. So, yeah, second set. Set two, baby. Opens, opens up into the mist, into Echo of a Rose, into uh, Take On Me, Aha's version. And then we do have a Bob Don Elements of With. Elements of With. I like elements that. Elements of oh. With. And we, were told, into, we were told that it was With. Yeah, yeah. In, uh, and then Into Doobie Song. And then into a good little rip and tumble. Um, yeah, I think just in terms of flow of a set, uh, Into the Mist, great version. We we you know get a jam out of it. Um, we don't get our, our ending obviously because Sorry, we B. transition we transition into Echo. But um, I thought just like flow, you have three uh, two three song combinations here. Um, great mix of songs. The, bit, the place erupted with Take On Me. Bob Don was great, sort of, I, you know, kind of after Take On Me was maybe a little weird if you had a bigger echo, but but it just, I think it, it sort of worked for the, the flow of the set. And then uh, Doobie, maybe a little bit um, in hindsight and sort of on reflection, like one you'd want different. I think it fits. I think that it's another element of the band just having fun. Ben is lighting up. They're drinking forties. It is just Vibes Jeb is lighting up. It was it, the night, yeah, like on a Sunday night. It felt like sort of this is just a fun show, and they were having fun at the end of a weekend run, and a good rip and tumble to finish. I think tumble's another song that, despite no massive versions that have sort of stood out insanely, um, it's gotten its mojo back a little bit the last couple couple tours, which is good. And then so, sorry, white lights, loose and white lights in it finish too. It's fine. B, please. Classic. Yeah, no, just real quick on this one. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you know, you got to finish Mist, but I will say, in, as far as unfinished Mist jam. go, yeah. if you're going to have an extended jam and then a silky segue, you know, after a big jam, I mean, that's not that's not as bad. You know, that doesn't upset me as much as like just a truncated Mist. Right into can't get you out of into, my head into just something that it Kylie. shouldn't go into. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so yeah, so so not as bad here, but I I, I would still say, I mean, you, you got to finish, finish this. I mean, come it it can't be this common. You know what I mean? Finish it. I wanted them to finish it. Finish it most of the, of the time. Yeah. And then the and then the the small amount of times you don't finish it, do this with it. What you did here. Um, so yeah. And otherwise, yeah, I mean, not much, not, not much going on in this set for me. I think this show kind of probably gets lost in the middle of the pack somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. just, uh, you know, again, great time to be had by, you know, all in attendance. Um, but when we have this large body of work, especially with all the shows this year, all the shows of this tour, um, you know, sometimes some of these shows end up, uh, you know, being being amazing in person, but maybe get a little bit lost in the shuffle on on re-listen as we as we review the tour. So, um, but yeah, yeah, that's that's all I got to do. F hey, finished mist in twenty twenty four. There you go. <laughs> well, merch coming soon. Uh, the, the second set is great. I I just I I love so much. I remember being struck on the watching the webcast. You know, knowing like wow, the, you know these jams aren't bracket. You know, that this isn't anything crazy, but wow, the flow of these first three songs here, Mist, yep. Echo, Take On Me, just going for it. Full disco vibes in the mist. Love yeah. love that jam. Similar to like uh, Cleveland 2022, uh, you know, Peter going crazy on the vintage vibe. 
Um, but man, the, the segues here also are so, so good, right? Like so, so good. Nice, nice little clav work. Uh, we don't, it, we don't always see that. And it's like, I think that's another part that's, that's yeah. nice. 2023 has shown us we're getting a lot more fluid in the transitions. Oh yeah. Um, it's just an echo I think is one that admittedly is whether or not it's a tease or another full song entry is one that, um, we allude to in a big rosewood or anything is this that we <laughs> we i think it's a it's a it's an easy entry song for them but it just like it keeps the energy going like you said and take on me just felt cool to kind of get an extended for when we had buffalo was this the first since buffalo last one was three twenty six twenty three. yeah and then so th- there so there have been two versions prior since buffalo they played at 12, 13, 19, Covington, 326, 23 at the Agora. Yeah. Covington. So it is. Co- yeah. Covington. 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 Um, but yeah, anyway, they, these, these three songs it's are Kentucky. great. It's Kentucky. It's Kentucky. Bob Don hints at the width. Uh, I was inclined not to mark it as width. A higher power informed me uh, that it was, in fact, oh, width. No, uh, and, this isn't width. Yeah. <clears throat> Sometimes we got you go it later, with higher though. power. We got it later. Listen, it we first, got we got it, it in a big case. way, and so we, we yeah. you know we don't need Kev to give a eulogy uh, for the for this Bob Don because of what comes later in the tour. <laughs> I'll take uh, any Bob think. Don any way, like Bobby Don, give it to me, even if it's not with. I know it's coming at some point. Yeah, Let's just it, listen to this did. fucking groove. Hell yeah! Um, do it really quick before we move on. Am I the only person who's going to talk about how awesome this Echo of a Rose is? It's great. It's awesome. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. It's hot. probably. You are like uh, Hose, yeah, Hose well, with Goose, right? That's your... <laughs> uh, no, this Echo of a Rose um, is one of the shorter, really hot versions where like Peter is going absolutely apeshit in this thing. Then it gets like very quiet for a second and Peter goes right back to going apeshit. Like he did not want to give up. The band was trying to lead him away from whatever this uh, Echo of a oh, Rose jam was. And then like, he just kept going. And I love that shit. So good. Absolutely destroying the piano on that version. Uh, is it like an all timer? Hell no. But is it a really cool, notable version of Echo of a Rose? Absolutely yeah. it is. It's so good. Yeah. And um, they really so much fun. love they really love loose ends this year. Uh just just for anyone who's curious on tease some it. Stats, oh. they, this is the this is the fourth loose ends of uh twenty twenty three. It has not been played four times in any year previously. Um it's only been played twelve twelve times ever. Uh, four of which have come out of a white lights um, just for some nice context uh, for you all I, here. I actually have, I actually, it's, I actually have it at 13 plays um, in, in oh, my I, data. And I do remember looking. So I think there's a show in, there's a show in fall of 2020 that yep. Elgoose.net does not include the loose ends, but they play loose ends. Is with, that, would that be the 10, 15, 10, 10, 15. Yep. 10 step. Yeah. Well, you're in luck people. You are, you are listening uh, to data change, being updated in update. real time uh, because I know there, there are definitely some out there that have not been updated with the vocals. Uh, but yes, that, that, uh, that white light. So that's, that's five white lights is here. Um, and no, of they the did 13. not in fact tease loose ends in white lights. They played it. They played uh, it. So thank you. Thank you very much, B. Yeah. We appreciate your service. This, this is a hot white light or a hot loose ends too. I thought it's so extended. Too, yeah. Big, yeah. It's got one. some hotness to it. So if you're looking for like hot versions of loose ends, check this one out. Might be the goat. I don't know. He's always this... looking for hot versions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, 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 this hot. <laughs> This uh, I thought also. Um, yeah. yeah, this is this this is where Rick chugs his forty during loose ends. Um, we get the whole band is just like, I think I think and and White Lights is another song that for every the every every man Kev, which is maybe his new rebranded name, moving into the winter tour Europe and winter is every man Kev, is that um, this is just a song that that'll capture people one more time. Milwaukee, it's a rowdy night. Sunday, people are drinking. We're having fun, you know. Sitting behind each other in Spanish. Didn't didn't, didn't you get a loose ends earlier this year too? I feel like I did. Uh, I feel like D gets all the loose ends. All right, September twentieth, twenty twenty three, Red Butte Garden Amphitheater, Salt Lake City, Utah. 
So beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful, Great beautiful city. venue. Uh, they the, the band smelled the roses there, so I'm told. Or at least Jeff said so. Hey, and uh, <laughs> before, we, before we dive into the show, Neil, I'd like to give a shout out to Jeff here uh, who guest listed a student uh, yeah, it was the, fucking awesome. awesome. Oh, yeah, hell at yeah. the U, at the, at the University yeah. of Utah, college. Uh, couldn't find it. Couldn't find a. Couldn't find a ticket. College, and Jeff came to the rescue on Twitter, asked for every their man. name, put him on the guest list. Kev appreciates it. Ke- Kev, yeah, I do. For yeah. the every man. Kev approved. I think everybody appreciated that. I mean, there was a every man approved. and woman appreciated, it, and others. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Every people. Every people. All right. Everybody. I think Jeff. I think. I think Jeff really enjoyed his time in college and what do you think you know what i mean so he's so it's good looking out for for the college kids and just always kind of thinking about you know college people college yeah. city of boston <laughs> you know he, he was here it's we had in college. Hey, neil do you know uh, people that went to berkeley <laughs> Uh, I know a lot of people went to Berkeley. I went to Northeastern. You may have heard. All right, of let's talk about before. Salt Lake City. Yeah. How do you feel about Berkeley? All right, not uh, Kev. Uh, I feel Kev. fine. <laughs> Kev. I feel fine about Berkeley. In any case, all right, here we go. Set one: California Magic, Indian River, extended. Uh, turn clouds, Rockdale, Atlas Dogs into all I need. And I don't have much to say about this set, uh, so I will hand this off really, really quick. You get a pretty long Indian River. I think it stays pretty much in the lane of Indian River. The last three minutes, you get, I don't know, something that kind of steps out of the typical Delta Jam. So that's worth checking out. I think if you're picking Indian Rivers in 2023 to listen to, I don't know if this is one of them. But uh, yeah, from there, I'll just hand it off. I I think this Indian River is cool. Uh, there, there's a lot of exploration of the space that happens. Uh, great keyboard textures from Peter throughout. But yeah, it doesn't really leave the 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 delta if you will space uh oh there, doesn't really leave the delta space uh for for most of it uh if you will and, and feels a little bit you know too long but it's one of those jams that is exploratory and is going to go a long way developmentally versus on re-listen to this specific one uh in my opinion otherwise you know good first set so on september 17th they played the Miller High Life Theater in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. On September 18th, they played no shows. Correct. On September 19th, they played no shows. Then on the September 20th, they played a show. And at that show, they played All I Need. Therefore, yes. no shows were played in between. One, I wish um, I had my visual aid with me. I'm surprised yeah. you didn't you didn't put your mom on that at, at break right there. <laughs> oh, man. Oi. So good. Um, so oy, set two, oy. here we go. Uh, <laughs> we get a Mississippi half step uh, into feel it now. Everything must go slow, ready, and don't do it. Set cut short because there was lightning in the area. So we were going to get at this show. Yeah. We should talk about the, the, what was going to be played. They were going to play Madavon, Moby Madavon in this set. Didn't happen. So what we were left with was pretty much a large, long Mississippi half step, which yes. there are very varying opinions on how good that is. I think it was all right. I think it was like pretty fun. Um, and then for the rest of the show, you don't really get much. You get, I think, the shortest everything must go of the whole entire tour. Um, you get yep. a really short feel it now. You get a slow ready that probably is pretty much standard. Slow and That's ready. it. That's, that's all you they, get. Then they, they throw in the don't do it. Uh, the favorite of the... We have five minutes left, and we need to do something here. Uh, yeah, you know, we, which we is know funny because that... we're like right when they were starting, we were just like, "Don't do it," and they did it. <laughs> yeah, and they did it. <laughs> they they was, did it. Was there bad weather? Was it was there weather? It was lightning. It was lightning. Yeah, right there. It was yeah. lightning. At least some sometimes with the lightning, you know, cancellation. It's like, okay, get off the stage now. But they were like, "You guys have five minutes. Like, throw throw in a little band cover here. Let let the people know that you wish you didn't have to do it." Uh, and you're saying don't do it to the lightning, you know? Yeah. Well, Maybe. it's deep. This, Thank yeah, you. I mean, obviously, it's 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 just the half step here. Um, but this is, but it's a really good half step, and I think it's, I think for now, it's a playlist worthy half step. Absolutely. And I, I, I kind of, I warmed up to it. I think at first I was like, oh, you know, I mean, it's it's long, but 
you know, I, I wasn't so sure, but yeah, I mean, I, I feel like it's really grown on me after, after more lessons and everything. I just, I love the song and the cover so much that, so, you know, a big part of me just wants all of these half step jams to be great. Uh, but I think this one truly is great. Um, probably, you know, it's not going to be, it's not going to be top, top 20, top 30, top 40 even, but um, yeah, I, this, this may stay on the playlist. Um, I really like it. And you know, I don't know that we've seen a half step set to opener before either. And that's the only other thing I would comment on is I think that's great. I think it's, I think that's a really awesome. I don't think, in, in fact, I don't think there's many covers at all that you can, that you should be coming out after set break and opening up your set two with, but I think this one you can, and, and I'd be, I'd be happy with it. So so yeah, I thought I thought it was really cool that they did that, um, and i I think I think our all of our I think collectively our, our initial thought when they opened the set with it was, oh yeah, we're we're probably about to get a big a big version with a big jam because we know they like to do it with the song. So um, so yeah, super stoked about this jam. It's 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 jam of the set. It's jam of the night, um, and and yeah, I mean, l- like you said, I mean, unfortunately, you know, things got cut short a little bit. Um, probably, I don't think they got cut short enough for any type of refund or, you know, free drink ticket or anything, but, um, but yeah, great. At least, at least everybody got this great half step. Yeah. I, I think the, the Madhavan Moby Madhavan was best saved for the next show anyway. Um, I, I you selfishly, know, honestly, I, and again, th- this is like, you know, when I saw J rad at the end of July in New York and the show got cut short, uh, by lightning 15 minutes before curfew, um, it's unfortunate. Uh, but you know, would have been a lot worse if it had been 30, 45 minutes earlier. Honestly, man. And it's always a risk when you go to outdoor shows. If you know, you looked at some red rock shows that happened early in the season this past year, uh, people were getting pelted with like hail and there was like some back and forth with the venue. Like did the venue warn, uh, patrons quickly enough for them not to get injured in, in, you know, yes, it sucks to miss out on some of these moments, but it's important that you don't get hurt. You know, and the band doesn't get hurt while they're playing. Yeah, I, I, I also think I'd like to draw the parallel in this half step peak to the ten four twenty two this old C uh, from St. Louis. Very similar vibe uh, to these peaks. Similar jam. I j- just want to draw that while we're talking about here. Uh, but it, you know, if we're all through with this, I'm ready to uh, to head to uh, Bonerland. Oh, yeah, just really quick. I just want to say, because I made this point earlier, when we talk about the Borderlands Rosewood Mm -hmm. style of jamming that shows up in the Wisteria from Detroit, it also shows up here. Very, very similar jamming throughout. So just wanted to add that one piece. There we go. B, sir. All right, Missoula. Bonner. Shows all right. Yeah, it's It's a good show. Friday night, so... Everybody's ready to party. Also, also kicking off another five nights in a row for the band. Okay. Okay. And yeah, we had to get the five nights in a row in there. Right. Right. Yes, at that we did. Moment. We did. <laughs> Where was I? Echo and the Bunnymen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Killing Moon. Killing Moon. Yeah. Yes, the the killing moon. Um, yeah. Also killing your flow. Yeah. The, <laughs> the killing moon. Mr. Action. Time to flee. Lead up. Drive. Redbird. That sounds like a hot set. It does. Hot. Set. hot. Um, so yeah, first Killing Moon since the debut at the Donnie Darko Halloween show in 2020. Was that 11, 6, 11, 7, 7, 11, 7. 7. Come on, man. So um, with the air too. The postponed Halloween shows. Yeah, yeah. Postponed. Um, South Farms. So yeah, really, really happy to see this come back. I mean, you know, and 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 we'll talk about this song a lot more actually. But um, yeah, yeah, great song um, and perfectly fine opener as well. So yeah, really set the tone um, for for a hot hot set. And so we get the Mister Action, uh, the Flea, Ooh. another awesome lead up, a drive, Ooh. a fairly a fairly extended drive. Yeah, decent um, drive too. And then, uh, and then, and then a Redbird to close the set. So, so yeah, I mean, look, um, from no incredibly notable jams 
throughout this set. I think I think the drive was probably the jam of the set for me. But boy, I mean, just let me say that again. Good Killing flow. Moon, Mr. Action, Time to Flee, Lead Up, Drive, Redbird. I mean, Ooh, that's great a hot set. Say, so, say Killing say, 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 say Killing Moon again. I'll, Killing Moon? Thank you. I'm going to I'll hold my <laughs> thoughts on kind of where where I rank this show until we get to the second set. But that's a that's a really, really, really strong set one. So yeah. what, what do you guys think? Absolutely. I love it. Like, I mean, 190 shows on the Killing Moon. Like that. That's 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 pretty great. Um, and it's a great fucking cover. It's a Jesus. great cover. And I I mean, it, it speaks to how great they think it is, too, because it popped up two more times on this tour. Uh, but Mr. Action, always fun. Time to Flee. This one, they get into that, like, Eastern tinge jam that they love so much. Um, really, really cool version here. But this drive, yeah, as you mentioned, B, this is jam of the set for me. Peter sticks to guitar throughout until, like, the last 30 seconds of the jam. Uh, th- this is big, too, for, for this era of the band. We're not getting very many improvisational opportunities where Peter sticks with guitar beyond like a minute or two uh, of a jam. They're few and far between. And so this one is just so groovy. I love when it kind of like deconstructs spuds kind of drives them forward with it, with that, with that clap stack. Um, but just really excellent, funky, groovy drive here. Um, and then that red bird uh, is just a, you know, triumphant way to close a set. Neil was talking earlier about the, these shorter red birds that are doing a lot. And this is just, an awesome set closing version, but man, the, this first set, they come out, they mean business. And that just continues in set two, which I can't wait to talk about, but who, who's got more thoughts on the, the first set here. Not much to add other than this, like everything's played right in this set. The set list is constructed. Well, yeah. I mean, you get the killing to start off the show like that. Just, you know, that's some mind blowing stuff. It's I was vibe, at the show a, where they played the vibe first set. One. It's a vibe setting song, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. And, it did it at eleven seven. I, I think that was incredible. And yeah, I love the fact that they're playing it again. And I think they love the fact that they're playing it again, as we're about to find out. Um, the flea was pretty good. You know, I, I think at the time we were really high in this flea. I think I've backed off a little bit on how excited I am about it. But, you know, like you, Ryan, I kind of heard that, like, I think you were calling that the Eastern jam kind of feels like it is on the edge of that klezmery jam that they do. Um, usually out of like, um, creatures but here it is in in time to flee and then the drive is just hot it's so hot like trevor's playing so well the, i mean the bass lines were so good peter was playing awesome awesome rhythm guitar throughout and you know we just can't say it enough when he plays guitar it's great and two he's an excellent keyboard goose. player yeah two guitar goose is fucking crushes sometimes and this is like an amazing example of that and then, yeah, yet again, you get like a 17 minute Redbird that's just hot. It's a great jam. And it's just, you know, it's not a 20 minute version, but these are all, this is the beginning of the Redbirds that like throw nine, back to like 18. <laughs> was it? Is it 18 on this one? It's like, oh, maybe, maybe it's 17. Yeah, I think it's around okay. 17. Uh, 17, 18. Yeah. So this one kind of throws back to Pittsburgh. It reminds me a little bit of it. Not nearly as good, but just has that heat that fire and i don't know i love it it's a pretty good redbird um i had like pretty much all the redbirds they played on this fall tour anyway so this one's up there though it's pretty good anyone else got stuff on this first set or kev you got no bad birds i think like neil said man like it's a song that they can play whenever they want to play it uh and it's always going to produce and it's always going to be good and it just feels like a comfortable space and they enjoy they enjoy it and it's easy for them to play in. So yeah, so set two, big, big thatch set big, two opener, thick. And then we get the Meaty. in your eyes cover, and then the drip field, and then the mad Moby Mad that was uh, cut out of the Salt Lake show the night before, uh, or two nights before rather. So and then an animal encore. So. Yeah, I mean, I mean, look, it's 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 all about the thatch here. Uh, this thatch is a monster. Um, I think there was there are some that might have it overrated, but uh, certainly a top 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 thatch and a top top jam of this tour uh, probably is the best jam of this tour. Um, to be fair, um, but yeah, this this is a big one, and it 
it has some really nice some really nice darkness to it um it has it has a little bit of everything it goes out there has a big triumphant finish and yeah i mean i think this one this might be the this might be the benchmark for you know how certainly at this point how how big thatch can go so um huge huge jam here um and then the rest of the set i mean yeah a, a nice in your eyes cover um Drip field. I really like the Madavan, Moby Madavan. You know, I think it's, I think sometimes it's tough with this one because we, you know, we think back to the first time they did this and, and it was such a, it was such an incredible, Woo. you know, ending Madavan jam. Yeah. That, you know, it's, you know, that it's, it, that Moby fits really well in here. Um, but it, it's really hard not to, not to compare, uh, you know, thinking back. So, and, and this one, probably doesn't reach those heights, but it's, it, this is still a really nice, a really nice, uh, ending jam in the Madavad. So, um, and then animal encore. Yeah. So, I mean, look, uh, and, and, you know, I mean, the drip field's really good too. This is, this is a really great drip field. Mm -hmm. And some might fact, say between... it contains elements of in your eyes. Well, in this drip field and, and, you know, the, the next one that, that they'll play, um, are, are two really standout versions. And so really nice to see them kind of doing some different things and, and experimenting with, with the drip field jams. And so, yeah, I mean, again, you, we talked about the first set and, and now you got thatch in your eyes, drip, Madavan with the Moby in there and, and an animal encore, which might, it, it that might be the only thing here where I'm saying oh, I might have I might have chosen something different there, but but that's not a that's not a bad call. You know what I mean? I don't care that shit. I, I, other, yeah. Otherwise, otherwise th this set too is is really really good. And so yeah. now you now you add it to to this to this really really top set one. And I mean I've got this I've got this right now as as my number five show of the year. So um, you know. Number two show of the fall, number five show of the year. So this this Missoula really really got it, uh, and and yeah, would have would have been really stoked to be at this one. Yeah, go ahead, Ryan. I mean, whether you think this thatch is the jam of the year or not, uh, as as some in this chat do, maybe one in the in the, in this podcast um, it might just be me at this point. Uh, really I'd like to good. I'd like to go on record as saying that Neil Landry was the first person to say that the thatch was jam of the year, and then became a coward about it. Fucking um, doxing the dude on the pod. Everyone knows what his name is. It's it's not a secret. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, <laughs> Continue. This thatch um, this thatch is is, your slander. is incredible. Twenty five minutes. Uh, everyone just locked in. I I especially love what Rick does kind of later in the jam, kind of using the whammy, like to actually bend the notes, like a wow, wow, as opposed to usually he just uses it for the octave down or octave up effects. So this is cool new uses for his guitar pedal that we'd love to see exploring different sounds, exploring different capabilities of what they can do with the gear that they've been using for a long time, especially, you know, given how much of a staple that is for his sound, but it's just, it's just so amazing for all 25 of the minutes. It's not 28. There's some crowd at the front crowd at the Banter. back. Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, Count Jobus on percussion <laughs> Jobus. and, and special, special effects, effects. Yeah. and special <laughs> effects. Uh, I, I don't know what that sounded like in person, uh, but on the boards, it's just a burst of static. Uh, I don't know if that was a bomb or Jeff now has a sample for a burst of static. Um, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's quality shit. <laughs> That's what we know. He's got a pad for just like awful fucking sound. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. This thatch is amazing. You know, you open the second set with it after that first set, you know, it's going to be business and they just, they just go for it here. Everyone's just dialed in. Um, you know, you need to listen to it. I, I did for the record, anyone who doubts it, I, I ABC'd it. My top three jams of the year, four or five even. And this, this is this is number one for me, uh, and so I, I will stick it there until eventually I get beaten into submission by other people's opinions, and 
move it down. Hopefully, it I don't. It sounds like you're not a very principled person. That that's unfortunate, right? Well, Listen, so most people, here. most people, Neil especially, will admit to the fact that getting peer pressured enough will change your jam ranking. Is, isn't it just getting more information and more things to consider? No. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're it's... you're kind of, you're kind of copping out on your rankings by blaming it on other people. Hey, it's number one on my playlist right now. All right. Yeah. And, and you know what? If it is number one on your playlist, I don't blame you because this is one of the best jams they've played all year. Is it the best? I mean, I don't know. That's subjective. And but... that's an embarrassment of Rich's conversation to have. No shit. And like this thing is great. This is a fantastic piece of music that's one thing all five of us can agree on on this podcast um it's the best that they've ever played indisputably yeah um, if, you, if you've got a better one let me know right now i'd love to know but i mean this thing's got energy it's got power i think maybe it's missing some elements that i think you think a you know jam of the year needs but i mean this thing is like dark and bleak and like hopeless at times it's like awful and like it's like, I mean, like the jam Whoa. is just like relentless. Like it just doesn't give up. And like, it feels like you're like, you're like drowning in this jam. And then like it recedes for a moment and like, you feel like you're free. And then it comes back and just like beats the shit out of you. It's, it's just so good. <laughs> but like, that's the best analogy I can give. <laughs> like it really does. And it's just like, you know, just like a, like a, like a, a, a storm at, at sea where like you just, you can't get free. So, um, so Neil, so Neil's using chat GBT. How would Hemingway describe? <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. He loses the fucking fish in the end, man. If this, like, thatch, was, thatch. if this thatch was Moby Dick, please describe um, it. Chat, we chat were doing old man in the sea there, but yeah. Um, in any case, um, the, the cool part about this is it's like so dark and like, like, bleak is the best word i can use and then it shifts to this like incredibly hopeful jam that is has a gigantic peak to it and i don't know it's just it's a fucking killer piece of music it doesn't have to be a conversation about whether or not it's the jam of the year this is awesome and it's the best jam they played on this tour and just real quick i would like to like hat tip neil on the literary correction there old man in the sea versus the moby dick that i suggested like yeah that. hemingway like, didn't so, write that one it was fucking so <laughs> seamless and so effortless and just moved on from it like that was fantastic well, hey he can he can go he can go hemingway on the next show when we talk about the old man in the boat um, yeah 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 but, wait wait so like before we move on here. We're, like, oh we're not we're not moving on yet i was just okay so i just want to say like when you play a jam like that and then the cooldown that you play immediately after is in your eyes. Fucking Holy perfect. shit. I mean, this show is ridiculous. Yeah. Like that right there, that one, two punch. Absolutely amazing. And then like, so you kind of get that as a cooldown in the song itself. And then the jam out of the back end, like the clav bass jam that comes out of the back is nuts. Like it doesn't even fit short. with the song. And it's short. Yeah, it's just so good. And then like the, the, you know, you get the Wolfman's brother kind of vibe there. Then it fades into the drip field after. And the drip field is so ridiculously good for drip field. Mm-hmm. I mean, man, like it's just, I love this set so much. Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. And the first Moby since playing in the sand in January, which is absolutely ridiculous to think about the fact that they didn't play Moby for 55 shows. Why? It's the best. Why yeah. wouldn't you play Moby for that long? Um, so I was really happy to see this guy come back. Um, I mean, it, this is the best Moby they've played to date. Uh, yep. You know, we, we can agree of all the four to five minute Mobies that they've played. This is the one. Thank you very much uh, for coming to my TED Talk. But yeah, the, the, the show, this set, unbelievable. Anyone have anything to add here before we move on? Really good show. Top to bottom, another great set. Good mix, new, good cover. Get some old with the Madhavan and yeah, I, I really like this show. There we go. All right. Pacific Northwest and let's go. Is is Montana in the Pacific Northwest? That's no. Okay. No, man. Now, now we're Montana. in the Pacific Northwest. Uh for Jeff's two hundredth show in the band. Congratulations to Jeff uh for Congrats. celebrating that milestone. And congratulations uh, to Neil on the switch and opener. Um, you know th- this is this is a show deserving of an of an accolade for Neil. Uh, absolutely, I, I did want to go to the show because this venue looks so fucking cool. This venue is crazy. About, like, yeah, the the sets. Like, I mean, holy shit, man! What a cool looking venue. I I kind of was expecting 
like a, a chrysalis moment at this show. I talked about it a lot on the day after show leading up to this. And then like after um, I was expecting. Did you tend to miss? Expect, tend to miss what? B B got the joke that I was making. Thank thank you, B. Yeah, it's Thatch. It's Thatch, bro. It's lead up. You you quoted a line oh, from okay. lead up unintentionally. He said, "Oh, how about that?" We tend to miss. <laughs> right. Thanks. You know what? It's nice that I was able to do that to you for once. Uh, I mean, <laughs> hey man, you know what they say. Uh, all right, no, I guess go ahead. All right, all right, for, all right. For, for for a show that we didn't plan on spending a lot of time on. Yeah, um... we're spending a lot of time here. <laughs> uh, well, here we go. Uh, I'll just run through the whole show here. Switching butterflies, Jive One Lee, Old Man's Boat, Earthling, Set Two, Pancakes Born, Inside Out Creatures, Your Ocean, Empress, Trevor Poetry, Empress, Rum Encore, Spokane Word, Man, Professor Tweaks. DDS. Uh yes. He's a fucking dentist. He's qualified. <laughs> he is qualified. This this is some this is some banter right here. Uh I think the the, the poetry is honestly the highlight of the show for me. This he is the first time my mouth. In, in all of the Trevor Reed's poetries that Goose has performed, all six of them. This is the first time that Trevor has read an original poem. Spokane word. What do you mean not true? Butter's wife. But like that's, that's not that's not poetry. Content. That's not poetry. We, we've sounds been over like it's me. Hey, it so, sounded like poetry to me. Yeah, yeah. it sounds like genre gatekeeping by Ryan. What I'm the not. Fuck? I'm not gatekeeping <laughs> anything. Okay, there there are people who I've discussed this with who have decreed yeah. a, a council that it is of not people poetry. that that you can't name. That okay, all right, man. I, one of them might be a dentist. You all never right. know. Well, I trust Dennis, so a lot of credibility <laughs> As you should. there. As you said, I think the one piece of music I want to talk about in this show is the Jive Lee, which is like a really interesting Jive Lee. Peter's playing like a very cheesy synth sound on this that he never, ever uses. So mm. if, if you want to check something out in the show, go check out that Jive Lee. It sounds like like fucking Mannheim steam, steam roller, like Christmas music. <laughs> like, it's it's. But it's good. And like, and like I've said this before, like, I mean, there are dudes who go out there and play the synth and it sounds like shit. And Peter never sounds bad when he plays the synth. Nope. Regardless of how cheesy, like whatever the patch he's using or whatever you call it, Ryan, I don't know. But like, I mean, it, it. it's the cheesiest of all sounds and it sounds fucking great in this Jive Lee. So that's the one thing I will say about this show. Go check out that Jive Lee. It's cool and very different than other Jive Lees. Is it the best Jive Lee? No. You should listen to it because it's good. Yeah, go. I mean, I mean, look, I, I, again, I, I'm sure this was a fun show for everybody who was there. I think this show probably suffered from the run of shows that immediately followed, and some of the way that the band was maybe kind of setting their set list up. Um, but, but yeah, you know, I mean, that happens. That happens on a long tour. I mean, you know, sometimes you've just got same thing with, I mean, leading up to Red Rocks, we'll probably, we're probably going to end up saying the same thing about another show. You know, it's like sometimes you're, sometimes you got to set things up. You know what I mean? You, you know, that's just, that's just the way it is. And, you know, sorry to anybody who, you know, spent a ton of money or, or went way out of their way <laughs> for this one, but, but I'm sure they had a great time. Killer looking venue. Every show is worth a trip, I'm sure. Killer venue, absolutely. Uh, shall we head over here, uh, Mister Mister Kev? Take us to this festival. Are we at Cascade already? We are. Yes, we are. The last Holy episode Holy of this part. Holy. Can you believe Holy it? We're only two Holy. hours in. Is it two hours already? No, we're we're not quite at two hours. We're almost okay. Back. I was gonna say okay. So we're at the uh, Cascade Equinox Festival in Oregon, uh, still in the Pacific Northwest, September 24th, 2023. We did not encore that shit. Hot tea opener, uh, <laughs> followed by Silver Rising. We get another uh, 20, just shy 22 minute arrow uh, into the mist, into uh, Jive Goose's favorite Kylie uh, cover, Can't Get You Out of My Head, uh, into Hunger Sight, SOS uh 726 and we round out the set with arcadia who's got what oh man i just want to say a bunch of things are going to piss drive off um (laughs) (laughs) that's all you need uh first of all this arrow let's go (laughs) is really really good so i'm gonna go on brand and say that it's like dark it has like 
really excellent base work by Trevor. Oh man, Trevor. that last five minutes of this arrow. So good, right? Oh like, my do you agree? God. <laughs> yeah, like it, it, th- this is a good arrow. This is the, the 2023 arrows we've been talking about. Yeah. Just absolutely crushes. And then, uh, yeah, man, can't get you out of my head. Last five minutes of that ridiculously hot. Like, it doesn't make sense that it's that is good. Is it Elmake? Is it not? I don't know. But whatever it is, it's I awesome. love that shit. Yeah, it's yeah. so good. I love the Kylie cover. Yeah, and like, you know, usually it sucks, but that sucks. But like, it's just like nothing noteworthy. But this one is something else, man. It makes people fucking dance, man. It makes people feel happy. Why do you hate happiness, Neil? Jesus fucking Christ. You know why, Kev? Because... Because B can't get you out of his head. Oh. So this was a, was this a can't get you out of my tree jam? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, God. This is a good set. I mean, I mean, you know, and and yeah, I mean, yeah, the end of that era was, is hot. You're right. Um, oh, my God. I, wish I haven't, I, I, like I, I haven't spent enough re-listens on, on Kylie to, to, to get there. I, I mean, I think I think when the when the mist gets gets cut down like that, uh, I just I can't I can't do it. Yeah, I can't it do it. It hurts. Um, can't get it out of your head. I feel like <laughs> I, yeah, I, I definitely I'm more of a creatures Kylie guy. Than a the band mist disagrees Kylie. with you. <laughs> so, well, uh, for the wait, record, wait. they are there are three. EDM predominant like they, they they've played three festivals this year that are predominantly electronic music, and all three of them and they're playing they've dance played music? Kylie they've played Jesus. Kylie, uh, and so if I were a betting days. man um, at this point, I I don't know if I'd put it on my fantasy for for Halloween um, because I've now said it on this podcast, <laughs> so it's now out there in the universe. I, no one so, is following your fantasy I, goose takes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't. That, I, I can't. I can't put. Get it out of your head. Some songs on on fantasy. You know what I mean? No, uh, I don't play covers. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you actually, like to I, win, I, and I just covers. like to have fun. It's true. Yeah, that's the difference. Well, I I, I like to have fun and win. So. <laughs> Kev Junior in the background there. Shout out. You'd be surprised at how much fun winning is, Kev. <laughs> Hey man, okay. If, if if we're gonna go there, let's pull up our DraftKings account. Well, I don't know why Ooh. Ryan. Like <laughs> if we're going for blood, let's go, oh, baby. Here we go. Oh, How many man. posters can you afford for the Europe tour, B? <laughs> oh man. Sorry. Was... <laughs> All right. Oh my god. I think don't this ask... is a, a really special time. Yes. Uh, it's the Neil, most special time. Neil, do you know what time it is? I think I do know what time it is. What time is eight it? O'clock, eight o'clock MST. And Daniel, do you know what time it is? <laughs> no. It's time for the mail sack. It's time no. for the mail sack. It's like our favorite sack. time. Ladies and Part gentlemen, one. it's Part time Part for one. the sack. And we have not one, not two, not three, but many different sack sources for this for streams these two episodes of sacks. tonight. Yeah. Did, did you um, did you email them to me or Oh no, you got to you got to find some social media here, buddy. He put he actually mailed it to you. It'll be there. <laughs> It'll arrive in <laughs> 3 to 5 business days. Um, All right, well, I'll just I'll just hear the questions. <laughs> well, we're we're going to we're going to try to uh to focus on some some mail sacks that are on uh you know fo- focused on uh the, the, these shows that we talked about here. Yep. Um, but, but interesting. Um, here, here's one. I'll start here, uh, from, from drive underscore one, uh, blame Vickers for the ridiculous amount of great musicianship this fall. Can't wait for Europe. Yeah. I don't think we've blamed Vickers, uh, and we're two hours into this podcast. Uh, and so let's blame Vickers for the band playing pretty well. Um, let's blame Vickers and let's thank uh, Becca and Brendan for making us those wonderful T-shirts that blame Vickers. As yes. Well. Thank you. Neil's wearing it right now. I, oh, we fuck. Speak. Yeah, man. Yeah. I, I heard Vickers might be a cop. Yeah. <laughs> well, that <laughs> was what I was going to say. Many, <laughs> many, many people are saying many people are saying this and, and, and it turns out that it's possibly true. I'm measuring my words. Vickers is, in fact, a cop. Neil, Neil, would you like to dip into the sack next? 
Uh, yeah, I'm trying to catch up here. What I do want to do is we got a different source. Um, we asked the folks at wisterialane.org to uh, offer some stuff, but I'm struggling to find the thread right now. So why don't we just jump in? Oh man, do searching it. for the, Neil searching for the sack. He's searching yeah. for the sack. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the the Bison Jams account says, "How can you recap a tour that hasn't concluded?" If our memory is correct, Goose went on to do a European leg of their autumn tour in 2023. Uh, to which I say, I think you're right. Great memory. I think fall tour is not over. Yeah, but we, some we people really want it to be over in one go. True. Yeah. Also that band true. has a, that band has a great memory. Yeah, they really do. Yeah, this is actually part one of the of the two part of the first part of fall tour there recaps we go. that we're going to yeah. do. So it's that like a quarter may, that you may further break up into sections as you choose yes. as a podcast listener. Frank, on, fractions on, on any podcast platform. Yes. Yeah, and then so the other one I wanted to say here because this is like actually is heartwarming. So from a uh, friend of the pod, Ryan Molnar, he says, uh, favorite non-show moment was having Jive Goose come out of his pickleball cave for some day after pods. Hope that continues. And I think we all agree. I agree. We hope that continues. So the high quality episodes. Oh, I right, bring tears to my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The people. No, Ryan's, no, no, Ryan's, a, Ryan's a, really, a really class act. Great, great friend of the pod. So yeah, no, I appreciate, I appreciate that, Ryan. And as time allows... Uh, I will continue to participate in as many day after show episodes as possible. And yeah, really kind of hoping this Europe tour shapes out, uh, shakes out to, to allow for some streaming Mm -hmm. opportunities as well as some, some day after show opportunities. So we'll see what happens. Well, we'll be seeing some jive in, in November, hopefully. Uh, D Kev, one one of you guys want to dip into the sack next year? I have actually, yeah, I wanted to take a a, a question from Captain Incredible and let you guys kind of duke this out here. Uh, if Salt Cakes and Fox Yeti had a baby, would you safe surrender it to the state? Well, luckily we haven't talked about the Fox Yeti yet. So, uh, I can say tune into episode (sighs) part two to find out about that (sighs) question. I was hoping, I was hoping to have reproductive discourse. It's not unfortunate yet. that's not happening with, with who kev with you with, with all of you <laughs> thank you thank you kev <laughs> thank you very much okay. for that uh, uh d so I'll, you, I'll... you got a stack here yeah. um well no i only uh the only one we're, we're relevant of our of our part one so so far would be a comment from uh at radiator 9987 the great went speaking of missoula as the best show and uh yeah i don't know it is i mean it was definitely the best show with this leg that we talked about here yeah it was, it was the best montana uh, I'd, I'd like did to i'd like to throw did one he have in a here. question moby. was it did, did he, he have a moby. question or more of a more of a, co- more of a comment he had moby hooven as the jam of the tour compared to the thatch even in that first part which is i think we don't agree. uh can we consensus say that he's wrong yep yes you know, all in favor I think we already did I, that yeah. I don't I don't have much other sack to drop. Well, so. we got we got from here on on from El Goose on Facebook. Uh Jeff, motion passed. No per stack. Uh Boston shows were amazing. The vibe in the pavilion in the pouring rain was unforgettable, and the performance exceeded that. The flow of the first set, especially the flea look at Cleveland, Danger Zone Jive Lee was beautiful. And that butter rum and jive two with the spit up split up. He spit said up. spit up, but he meant split <laughs> up. Of SOS and Dawn and that Modavon, just an incredible night. I think Neil would be inclined to agree with you, uh, you know, to the tune of nine beers. Uh, Neil, yeah, did you have another have sack really here? many beers that night. I mean, like, yeah, yeah what fall. a show, though. I had so much fun at that show. <laughs> and, like, if this is my opportunity to say I had, like, a great time, like, yes, I had a fucking amazing time. Amazing. Can Neil, I- would you like to sack us out here? Well, I think B had a true or false there. So, oh, B had a true or false. No, I don't. I don't have access. I, I can't access the sack. Um, I was. I was just saying for you, Neil. I think that last comment was was a true or false question. I'm um, question. I, I'm guessing your answer would have been it's true. True. One sack. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. yeah. And I would have said true for the most part. Can I can I re can I recover my sack effort real quick? <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely, Kev. So <laughs> so if I sack. if I could redeem the sack effort, uh, factory fishing, uh, favorite moment, whatever the band says, Trevor Bays. 
Yes. And 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 yeah. and, and I'm a hundred percent in full agreement. And I'm sorry, I'm going to pass this back. I yield my time back to the gentleman from Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, so, let, let me, let me, what, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm not, I'm not I'm the gentleman from Massachusetts. <laughs> but I North didn't wanna, Quincy I didn't, guy. I didn't want to move on from that. I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to let this opportunity pass. Saying Ooh, nice. Trevor Bass is great. Nice. When Rick sings Trevor Bass. Trevor Bass. That is amazing. Oh yeah. my goodness! Agreed. True. Um, I say true. John yep. from Massachusetts. Well, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> wait one last one, Ryan. We're gonna oh, do one, one last one. Neil's got one more. Yeah, one yeah. Because I'd like to do one from the folks at WisteriaLane.org. Uh, if you haven't checked the website out, please go do that. An amazing community of folks who care a Check lot about them. the music this band makes. Radio. Um, that was awesome. That so, was Beef awesome. of Ages says uh, the only show I was able to see in person was Milwaukee. It was correctly lauded at the time as a blistering heater coming off the builds of truly great shows in Boston and Detroit, but has since seemingly fallen by the wayside in the shadow of everything that happened afterward. I would submit that Milwaukee was where Elizabeth got her sea legs and took flight for the rest of the tour. Holy yeah. Uh, and yes, absolutely true. Uh, we did, did say that, that earlier. Neil? Was that you? No, I didn't. And he <laughs> well, wrote let's, that. Let's, uh, I mean, let's I mean, not forget about Elizabeth from earlier this year, even. I mean, it's... All right. Yeah, no, but that's the one that was the launching pad for all of the rest of Elizabeth's that came after like 100% agree. He said a few more things, uh, mentioned Jeff, uh, smoking a spliff, uh, on, uh, in the middle of doobie, which, which we, we didn't really talk about on this pod, which we should have, because that was we fucking did. amazing. We, did. we said he it happens, up. It happens doobie song. Time. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, yeah. So thanks for that contribution. Agree a hundred percent. Um, that really was a turning point for the song on this tour. All right. Ryan's getting impatient. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we, Wait, we, hold we, on. One more second, Ryan. I got yeah, one more. Yeah, I love it. Go, Neil. All right. I'll, I'll mute Neil again uh, if I need to. But this brings us to the close of our yeah, first part can I just, of the I just, Can I just add one more thing? Sorry. Just <laughs> one, more, one more part, one thing. I sure. forgot to mention this earlier. Sure, B. The Boston Thatch, I mean, is really, really good. Yeah, that, that was is. Thatch just open it, opening up its wings and really setting the tone for the rest of the Thatches. <laughs> That came after it, so I think we need to credit that Thatch, Daddy well. Thatch, Mommy yeah. Thatch. Okay. Yeah, the first <laughs> the first time they played the song during the tour, if that song jams later in the tour even better, then I, we do need to to pay homage to that first one. I wonder if that yeah. even happens. Fuck All right, yeah, we'll see. All right, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening uh, to the whole two hour first part of our fall tour recap. Uh, tune in uh, later this week as we bring you part two, uh, which we are going to record right now. Uh, so, you know, we apologize in advance uh, for however that one starts. Uh, but we're going to dive into the second half of the tour. And we hope everybody enjoys that when they get to hear it. Uh, if you choose to listen to another episode of this podcast, and we hope you do. Uh, so we hope everyone had a great time on this first half of fall tour. We hope everyone is enjoying their time off. Thank you everybody for listening to this episode of always almost there we will see you for our second half of tour recap very very soon thank you very much love you